pregame conversation with SNU head coach Dustin Hayda, senior day for the Crimson Storm as they take on Oklahoma Baptist today. And Dustin, going back to last week, program's first ever win at Arkansas Monticello. Just take us back through uh, how that came to be. Yeah, it was a fun game. Um, first game to win at Monticello, and and uh, we just kind of tacked that on to Russellville and, and Ada. Um, so just really proud of the team doing some things that we haven't done around here for a really long time. In that game, we we played three phases really well, um, and so it was fun to to accomplish and just play as well as we did in all three phases for the whole time on the road. You know, bring we had to bring our own energy, um, of course, and and they did that, and that was um, just a lot of contributions from a lot of different people, and and so it was a fun trip for us, and um, it was enjoyed uh, the whole eight hours back for sure. Senior day today, you're recognizing 19 guys. Um, you know, what have those guys meant to the program over the years and, and how you've been able to lay the foundation based on their work here? Yeah, they've done a great job. And, and I mean, they're going to be the most accomplished um, class in, in SNU history Division II wise, which is a, which is a big deal. Um, hopefully we can add to that today as we go. But um, just culturally and, and – what we've tried to get done, they've been a huge part of, of turning the program around. And um, I, I owe a lot to them as the head coach, and, and they all had chances to leave and do other things. And a lot of these guys have had chances to get their – they've already had their bachelor's degree. They've had chances to hang it up and go do other things, and they chose uh, to stay in the program and, and really have set the precedent um, – for all the future classes on what they need to – on how to work, how to enjoy it, um, how to love football, how to love one another. And, and they've been huge culturally, and, and they're good at football too. So that's been a really good – that's how they've gotten ahead uh, and gotten the program ahead. And so uh, we're going to miss them for sure. Uh, hopefully they'll, they'll go out with a bang today. Gage Porter, obviously being one of those seniors, you've obviously had a very close relationship with him in his entire time on – on campus, what's he meant to you personally as well as on the field? Yeah, it's been good. We've we've known each other for a really long time, um, and when you're when you're in that football environment, that competitive environment, um, you get to know each other in a lot of different scenarios emotionally, the highs and the lows of it, um, the good and the bad off the field, um, just helping each other. I say helping each other. He's helped me a ton, and and hopefully I've helped him a ton just on and off the field, but. Uh, you know, everybody knows how special he is as an athlete. Um, he's been a great worker. He's been he's been loyal and true to the program and to his teammates, and it's been a really good uh, career um, that everybody on the outside has seen, um, but just as much internally inside uh, the program as well. 
Today's opponent, Oklahoma Baptist, much improved from last year. What strides have the Bison made this year compared to where they were a year ago? Well, their personnel's a lot better. You know, they were they were down so much from a health standpoint at this time last year, and, and that really hurt them. Um, I, you know, they're fairly healthy right now uh, in most positions. Um, and their per- so their personnel's just better. They've, they've been better, um, particularly on defense. Um, they've got better players playing, playing in Gabe's system. So – um, they're a they they run a great scheme and and it'll be it'll be a task for us offensively uh, just to match up and and identify the scheme part of it and then offensively you know their quarterback makes a huge difference for them um, and he's been playing really well and so it's kind of been the he's kind of been the the motor to to make them run on offense and so he'll be a good challenge for us as well. When you look back at some of the other games on film and just see maybe some of the su- success that some of the other run-heavy teams had against OBU, do you does that give you confidence going into a game like this, or do you treat everything as a blank slate? Yeah, not really. Our scheme is so much different. So we're one of we're one of only maybe two gap scheme run teams in the conference. So it's really really hard for us to to compare what we're doing in our run game compared to what a lot of these inside zone teams are doing. And if you watch the tape and really dig in, it's not been a schematic problem. It hasn't even been a, a maybe even a personnel problem. It's been, you know, some missed tackles. They've had some trouble tackling some of those teams. And, and um, some of those rushing numbers are inflated because of that. Um, and so we're definitely, we're going to have to, we're going to have to identify guys. We're going to have to block them. Um, and we're going to have to run with a purpose when we have it. You've been so great on the road the past two years. You're going to share the love with the home fans this week. Man, I sure hope so. These, these people deserve it, and the energy will be great, and it'll be, a, it'll be a great time with you know a lot of people coming back for homecoming, and um, I've already been contacted by a ton of alumni that, that plan on stopping by. So the energy is going to be great. We've got to, we've got to supply um, them with a great experience, and, and that's just kind of a side part of it. But, I mean, we want to win and play well, um, but we want to – we want to supply some energy to those guys as they as they feed back into the program. So we're sure hoping that 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 happens. And and uh, I don't have a great answer for you on any of that. Um, but uh, you know, hopefully this will be a another win at home. Well, Dustin, thank you so much for your time, and look forward to seeing you guys go out with a win today. Appreciate it, Luke. <laughs>
um, consistent coaching, uh, but also just a better defensive play. And uh, it'll, it should be a good matchup. Oh, it's starting to rain, Luke. It's football weather, November, a little sprinkle right before kickoff. But uh, it should be a good game. And this SNU ground attack that has not slowed down this season or last season uh, should be a battle of great Crimson Storm rushing offense against a stronger Bison uh, defense. Oklahoma Baptist has improved significantly, as we mentioned on defense. Just a few of the numbers for you. Last year, 43 points per game, 280 on the ground, 205 through the air, almost 500 yards of offense allowed, nearly seven yards per play. This year, though, 26 points per game, 190 on the ground, 147 through the air, which is 11th nationally, just 335 total yards allowed and five yards per play. But if you dig deep, Landry, the Bison have given up 346 yards per game to the other four top rushing offenses in the league. That would yeah. be Harding, Henderson State, Southern Arkansas, and last week, Washita Baptist. Also given up 49 points per game, just four of their 30 sacks coming in those four games as well. And they come in pretty beat up on the defensive side of the ball. Yeah, and, you know, you you got to look at small sample sizes and, and – Take a take a quick look at him. You know you certainly need to be prepared as as you come in. Coach Hayes certainly have his guys ready to go. But this this Bison defense has made the best of their opportunities uh, at the very least, and uh, and has play, been playing well and is uh, coming in on a, a good hot streak. But again, Luke, like you mentioned, struggled against those rushing attacks that do it with consistency. And I don't expect Coach Hayda to change his game plan in the last game of the season. I expect him to run the ball. Um, he's going to try to find space wherever he can get it, whether it's with Gage Porter on the outside with one of those speedy wide receivers slash running backs or right up the middle with this power game. There's going to be plenty of opportunities for this Crimson Storm offense to make some big plays on the run game. It is senior day, as we mentioned, 19 seniors being honored in that pregame ceremony. Gage Porter being one of those, uh, along with several other guys uh, in the starting lineup, Angel Ramirez, Jarvis Davis, Josh Johnson, just a couple of the names that were honored before the game, along with linebacker Cole McMahon. But Gage Porter, obviously the biggest name who will finally, officially, uh, compliance Associate Athletic Director Steve Johnson to my right can confirm that Gage Porter will not be back next year uh, unless he finds him another year somehow, but that's on Steve. But <laughs> the Crimson Storm senior quarterback had a tremendous year a season ago, 1,751 rushing yards, 27 touchdowns on the ground, and somehow, Landry, he has managed to duplicate that. He is first in the nation in yards, Tied for first in touchdowns with Washita's Kendall Givens. He's first in yards per game, fourth in carries, and fourth in yards per carry. It seems pretty unfathomable that Gage would be able to duplicate what he did a year ago, and yet here we are, final game of the season, and Porter needing around 210 yards to break the single-season GAC rushing record, which he set last year. Yeah, break his own record. Yeah, and uh, Gage Porter in this offense has, has not changed their M.O., and they, they're going to do what they do best, and that is run the football, in particular with Gage Porter. Uh, it is a credit to several people for his his uh, great two years. One is, is him as an individual athlete. He is he is certainly in, in the short list for SNU Football Hall of Fame, if not already sneakily on that list. But he also... Is, has been following a great offensive line who has been banged up but has played really well, and he is well coached. Coach Hayda has done a tremendous job with this offense and with this team over the last few years. All credit to the players, the coaches, for the turnaround we've seen the last few years from this Crimson Storm football team. Captains meeting at midfield, Josh Johnson, Kenyatta Richardson, Jarvis Davis, Gage Porter for SNU, Aiden Thompson, Michael Marshall, Jake Landers, and Nick Carpen for Oklahoma Baptist as the Crimson Storm take the field here in Bethany. Just a couple minutes away from kickoff. Again, SNU looking for their first winning record in Division II play. A weird thing for SNU this year, just two and eight 
at home over the past two years, eight and three on the road. <laughs> you heard Coach Hayda joking about it in the first in our pregame conversation on whether or not uh, he was going to share the winning love with the home crowd this week, and obviously <laughs> certainly hope so. And uh, Just one of those weird statistical yes. anomalies, Landry. Well, I think he was talking about going to East Central and and just kind of trading off. You know, you go there and you're like, oh, we're going to get a win, and they come here, they might get a win. So once to right that ship and get, get these seniors home with a win that they well deserve today. As we count down to kickoff as the Bison take the field here in Bethany. Landry, your keys for today's game. Yeah, I mean, I, it's easy to want to lock in on these two offenses, but I have my eyes on both these defenses. Uh, they will have to stop potented offenses, and it will really be a battle of attrition. Who, Which defense will let up first or which defense will make a big play? That's where I've got my eyes today. Luke, what about you? I think, like you said, it's going to all come down to the SNU defense today. SNU should be able to move the ball, if not with ease, certainly well enough to win the game. Oklahoma Baptist, for all their improvements on defense this year, you look it by the numbers, and even though they played four different quarterbacks a season ago and they've played three different quarterbacks this season, even going through a bunch of injuries, they're very young along the offensive line this year, all – the factors there pretty much no improvement offensively numbers wise from a season ago that saw the bison go one and ten so the SNU defense certainly has the pressure on them to limit the bison especially through the air they're third in the conference in passing yards this year 217 per game that is where the SNU defense will have to step up allow Gage Porter to do his thing on offense and come out with a season-ending victory over their rivals, Oklahoma Baptist. The Bison will be kicking off to start this one. They won the toss and deferred to the second half. It'll be freshman Patrick Maxwell kicking off. And one in couple injuries for the Bison. One potential big one in a tight game that we expect today. Kicker punter Luke Watkins has been out over the last few weeks, so two true freshmen out there handling all the kicking duties. Patrick Maxwell, the freshman out of Georgetown, Texas, handling the kickoffs. And will Ian Villarreal, who will handle the punting and place kicking. Patrick Maxwell, a 6'4 kicker. Yes, and you know stranger yeah. to large kickers, especially those that wear 99. That's right. Donald May and Braxton Bird back deep for SNU, and we're underway in Bethany. It'll be Bird from the three. Heading to the middle of the field, now angling to the far sideline. Cuts up field, it gets across the 25 and up near the 30-yard line. And that's where the SNU offense will start. First and 10 against Oklahoma Baptist. Yeah, already lots of energy in the crowd. Both, or both sides of the stands filling up quickly. Homecoming week here. Food trucks, tailgates, it's a, it is a festive atmosphere. Absolutely. The Crimson Storm start first and 10 at their own 29 yard line with the ball on the left hash. Wide receiver to either side. Asa Robertson, homecoming king himself to the near side for the Crimson Storm. Porter takes a snap, fakes the bubble, now picks his way right up the middle and gains Seven yards up to the 36-yard line, second down and three. Yeah, and that's a run all the way. It's just a design quarterback draw with a, with a lead blocker in his tight end in front of him. Gage Porter doing what he does well, getting six yards on first down, creating an easy set of second and third down. Two wide receivers near side, one to the far side, Zapata. Carlos Zepeda, the senior from Ponder, Texas, in the backfield with Porter. Porter fakes the give to Fellows, picks his way up the middle, dives forward to the line to gain. They're going to mark him a yard shy at the 38. So third down and one for SNU with the ball in the middle of the field. Yeah, I think that turf is a little slick. He slid past the first down marker but was tripped down just, just shy. And SNU not trying to disguise what their game plan is. It's going to be lots of Gage Porter. Everybody in tight. Porter, a little tush-push action from Carlos Zepeda, and Porter 
up to the 40-yard line for the first down for the Crimson Storm. Appreciate you not calling that the brotherly shove as a Cowboys fan. I take offense to that. The push, brotherly push. shove is a pretty, very, Luke, very well no, thought out nickname. Though. It's not that clever. <laughs> SNU scored on their first seven drives, touchdowns on their first seven drives in Shawnee last year en route to a 56 to 21 win. Off to a good start here. Porter put, sticks it in the belly of Donald May running to the near side. Got blockers downfield into Bison territory, down across the 40 yard line and close to the 35. Big run for Donald May, and a first down for the Crimson Storm in OBU territory at the 37-yard line. Yeah, Donald May finds some green grass, and he's able to find that green grass because Ace Robertson gets a nice seal block on that uh, corner or that safety coming down to make the play. SNU pushes tempo quickly to the line of scrimmage. 12:45 to go, first quarter. Porter pulls it out of the belly of Zapata, then fo follows him up the middle, taken down. On the play by Luke Morrow, but not before another gain of five for Porter. Just chunk after chunk after chunk here early, Luke. No hurry for this Crimson Storm offense. Coach Hayda certainly wants to maintain possession as long as possible. Often jokes with us that that is difficult to do with a talent like Gage Porter who will break one open. Good first drive so far. Second and five, 12-10 to go first quarter from the Bison 32-yard line. Robertson in motion to the top of the formation. Porter sticks it in his belly, trying to get outside. He's strung out, and a big loss for Asa Robertson all the way back to the 39-yard line, a loss of seven on the play. That makes it third down and 13. Bit of a south wind this afternoon. So the Crimson Storm probably in four-down territory just inside the Bison 40-yard line. Yeah, you said it, Luke, four down territory. So you think a chunk here, and then hopefully you're working with a fourth and reasonable on the next play. Don't want to take a sack here. Struggling to get the play in. Eight seconds. Play clock down to three. Porter takes a snap. Back to pass. Has time. Steps up. Fires it down the sideline, looking for Aaron Fellows. It's through the hands of Morrow and hit off of Fellows' hands. It's incomplete. Yeah, and that brings I, up fourth down. I think Fellows, expecting there to be a deflection by an OBU defender, is surprised that the ball gets through. OBU had a perfect attempt at a, a pick. Gage Porter steps up in the pocket but still kind of launches off of one foot there, not able to get the power. Fellows in position but unable to connect. It's going to force the first punt of the day. Adam Atwell on to punt for SNU, averaging 40 yards per punt this season. Needs just a bit under that for this one to be perfect. High spiraling kick, hits at the 12 and takes a OBU bounce where it is downed by Blake Nail at the 17-yard line. That'll take us to a timeout on the field. 11 minutes to go in the first quarter. No score between the Crimson Storm and Oklahoma Baptist. We'll be back with more. This is SNU football. Character, culture, and Christ have been the motto for Southern Nazarene University for many, many years. When I came as president, uh, I was really curious about those words and really curious to dig into the archives. In fact, a conversation on campus uh, one day with a visitor to our campus who asked that same question, what does character, culture, and Christ mean today? These days, I like to talk about refining character. I think that uh, we're all in process. and. In those collegiate years, those years of a university experience, there's a great opportunity to refine character. Welcome back to Bethany. SNU comes up empty on their opening possession. A promising drive. They got down to the Bison 32-yard line with a seven-yard loss on second down on the end around to Asa Robertson. An unfortunate setback for the Crimson Storm offense and had to punt it away. But still good movement for the Crimson Storm on the opening drive. And now we get to see the defense, Landry. Yeah, this defense looking ready to go. We'll have to, we'll have to show that here early on. The Bison were up to the task, are the storm. Aiden Thompson, the quarterback. Richard sophomore out of Abilene. One wide receiver to the near side is Michael Marshall. Turns and gives it 
into the belly of Edric Lambert. He carries tacklers all the way up to the 24-yard line, a gain of seven on first down. And if the Bison are able to do that, that will be a problem for yeah. SNU today. A little bit of hesitancy from this Crimson Storm defense. I think probably expecting a quick pass instead. Uh, met with a run right up the middle. Second and three for OBU. Thompson gives to Lambert again. Met in the backfield this time. He'll lose yardage. Back to the 23. And that makes it third down and four. The Bison have struggled on the ground all year, just 91 yards per game, 11th in the conference. They've been without E.J. Moore for the latter half of the season. They averaged a little over 100 yards per game with him, but less than 80 yards per game coming in over the last five games without him. Third and five for the Bison. Two wide left, one to the right. Thompson rolling to the left. Looking for help, fires it, looking for a receiver. It's incomplete, no flag on the play. The intended receiver was Nick Harris. And SNU forces the quick three and out. Yeah, and Ethan Miner in great position there. And maybe there's a little bit of tug on the arm, but either way, he's in great position to, to make a play on the ball. They're just running a flood route, getting their quarterback in, in the open field, turns his shoulders, but has no one to throw to. Fortunate hand placement on the inside where both That's the right. back judge and the side judge unable to see really what was going on there. Villarreal on to punt. High hanging punt. Joe Flores makes the fair catch at the SNU 41-yard line with 9.43 to go in the opening quarter. We'll take a timeout and come back with the SNU offense. This is SNU football. It's a beautiful morning, Scotty, and we have an early game today. That injured list, it's getting longer by the minute. Not to mention, uh, there's apparently a nasty virus sweeping through the locker room. Yeah, but these players, they're in good hands. All of them need to feel their best this season, Scotty. Yes, they do, Jack, because this team is on track to win it all this year. Every day, Mercy's team is ready to take care of yours, bringing you the care you need now. Find out all the ways to access Mercy at mercynow.net. Welcome back to Bethany, with this being the last home football game of the season, last se game of the regular season. We'll turn our attention to the hardwood. And we'll get updates on those scores for the Crimson Storm. Big win for the SNU women yesterday over number two ranked Minnesota State Mankato, 73 to 56 up in St. Joe's, a great opening win for Trent May's squad. Here, SNU football with the ball in the middle of the field, first and 10. Gage Porter gives it to Asa Robertson around the left side, trying to cut up field. He's going to be pushed out of bounds. Not sure if he got back to the original line of scrimmage. He did not. Another loss of two for Asa Robertson. That makes it second and 12. Yeah, and staying true to this offense, Spreading the ball around to a variety of people, trying to get some space on the edge. So far, the space has been in the middle of the field. We can't just focus there. Got to keep it moving. Second and 12, and a, now a false start on the Crimson Storm. We left tackle Andy Cardenas, so second and 12 becomes second and 17 now with the five-yard penalty. SNU, one of the most penalized teams in the conference this season. 11th with eight penalties for 68 yards per game. Yeah, and Luke, correct me if I'm wrong, that's down from previous years. 
but definitely up from a year ago. Yes. Two wide receivers right, one left. Porter fakes the give to Ramirez. Back to pass, escapes the pocket to the near side. He's got a lot of space, cuts up field at the 40. Runs over a man at the 45, and that'll get the crowd and the sidelines going. Poor sophomore Luke Morrow was on the receiving end of that blow from Gage Porter as he gets all the way up to the 48-yard line, making it third and three. Yeah, and uh, just a little bit of a speed bump there for Gage Porter. He's still on his feet, looking to run this third down play and keep this drive moving. Third and three, Porter. Bubble out to Asa Robertson on the near side. He's got the first down across midfield, down to the Bison 48-yard line. A first down for the Crimson Storm. Yeah, Asa coming off the field. He took a shot a little bit there, doing all right. But that's what you need, a big play by your quarterback and then distribute to one of your playmakers out on the in the open space on the bubble. And you a little thin at receiver. No Jarrell Farr, broke a collarbone last week at Monticello. No Donovan Hill who went down in the Washita game. A little thin at that position, but a deep, deep group. Porter fakes to Fellows, up the middle he goes. Five yards down to the 43-yard line of Oklahoma Baptist. Second down and five upcoming. Halfway through the first quarter, no score between SNU and Oklahoma Baptist. Yeah, and you, Luke, you mentioned this wide receiver group, and yeah, there are some injuries, but but it's a group that Coach Hayda feels like all of these players can play anywhere, and, and certainly do. They can mix and match, and uh, lots of depth. Lots of opportunities for some younger guys to get, get the ball in their hands. Two wide receivers left, one to the right for SNU from the middle of the field. Porter trying, flips it out late to Donald May with the left hand. Let's see where they mark him. They mark him down at the 38. And they're going to say just shy of the line to gain. So it's third and about a foot. But Porter hemmed in in the middle yep. and made a late left-handed push out to Donald May, a risky play there. Yeah, and you could tell Donald May knew it was coming. Speaking of push, here's Porter under center. Checks to the sideline. Still plenty of time on the play clock for the Crimson Storm. Third and a foot. Porter pushes the pile. He's got enough for the first down. Scooter Baker trying to rip at the football, but to no avail for Oklahoma Baptist. It's a first down for the Crimson Storm. Yeah, and the tush push works again. H. Porter already up to 33 yards rushing this afternoon. And needing smidge over 200 to break his own conference record that he set a year ago. Five wide set for SNU. Porter gives it to Donald May, running to the near side. Cuts it up inside at the 35. And he's going to be wrestled down by Brandon Spencer. Down to the 32-yard line. With another pick up a five, and SNU more than content with five yards and a lot of time off the clock. Yeah, they are having their way in, in the run game, and that's what they want. They want to keep running the offense that they know and that they feel comfortable with. Luke, I think other than just a few screen passes, I think that pass to Donald May was technically a lateral, so I think Donald May will get credit with the run, but, but nothing down the field, no shots taken. This methodical, run the ball, have success. Ball in the right hash. Dalen Smith, the tight end, comes to the near side of the formation. And Robertson in motion to the top. Porter fakes it to him. He's got time, fires it out across the middle. Dalen Smith running to the near side, and he's down near the 10-yard line. Yeah, you have crossing routes there. So you have a eight, look like eight, maybe 10 yard dig route across the field. And then you have a deep post coming over the top and it freezes those linebackers and makes the safeties go with the post and it leaves the dig route wide open and Gage Porter hanging in the pocket and delivers a nice touch pass for the first down and more. First and goal, Crimson Storm. At the Bison 10-yard line, two wide right, one left. Ball in the left hash. Porter follows the blockers. Right up the middle he goes into the teeth of the Bison defense. He met Jake Landers in the hole and carried him down to the five-yard line. Second and goal from the five upcoming for the Crimson Storm. 
Four minutes to go in the first quarter. Still no score between these two schools. Again, no rush here. Let Gage Porter in this offensive line who've been working hard catch her breath. Three downs to score. <laughs> SNU's only attempted three field goals this season. Not going to start kicking them in the last game. <laughs> Ball right in the middle of the field, two wide to the right. Fellows and Ramirez flank Porter. Now Fellows comes in motion. Porter fakes it to him, cuts it up inside, and he cruises in. An easy walk-in touchdown for the leader, Gage Porter. Yep, just following his blockers. Doesn't get touched on the way to the end zone. Five more yards closer to that record. Atwell on for the extra point. Under the hold of Smith Nave. Spot hold kick. Up and true. So at 323 to go in the opening quarter. The Crimson Storm lead this one 7-0. We'll do a quick update on the rest of the happenings this weekend. SNU men's basketball coach B.J. Foster got his first win as the head man of the Crimson Storm. Season opener for the men's team, 83-81, a thrilling one over Nebraska Kearney last night. The SNU women today just polished off Minot State, 60-42, so a fantastic 2-0 weekend for the Crimson Storm women up in St. Joseph's, two of a really tough non-conference lay. They'll host Missouri Southern and Lubbock Christian sandwiched around Thanksgiving in two weeks. And if you've got time, come out for those games because those should be awesome games. And then Trevor Harmon's SNU men's soccer team, a 2-0 win over Northeastern State in the semifinals of the GAC tournament last night. They take on Rogers State for the right to go to the NCAA tournament tomorrow afternoon at 2 o'clock. You can view that game on the GAC Sports Network with myself and Landry on the call for that as well. Absolutely. Cameron Van Pruyen, high end over end kick. Skies this one over to the Bison up man. That is Jackson Canard over at the 21 yard line. That's where the Bison will put it in play. First and 10 with 323 to go in the first quarter. And Landry, a three and out for the SNU defense the first go-round. We'll see if they can do it again. Yeah, and they had great success. Um, they get seven yards on the first down run. You kind of scratching your head a little bit, but, uh, but stepped up defensively. Good linebacker play on second down, coming in and making sure tackles and then forcing a bad pass with just good downfield coverage. Hope to see the same here on this first down. Two wide receivers right, one left for the Bison. Thompson takes a snap, rolls right. Fires it down the sideline, looking for Nick Harris. Incomplete. Good coverage. Second down and 10 upcoming. Good coverage again. Nothing over the top, nothing short. It's kind of a stop fade. They want, want a defender to kind of bite on, on the deep fade. Too much, too much juice on that one. Flies out of bounds, incomplete. Wide receiver to either side here on second and 10. Extra offensive lineman to the left side of the formation. Thompson gives it to Lambert up the middle. He's cut down. Carter Brock coming around the end. Chops down Lambert after a gain of one up to the 26-yard line. And it's third down and nine. Big down. Almost a full lineup change here for the Crimson Storm defense, trying to get some more secondary players in on this possession. 2.48 to go. Offsides coming for SNU, and the quick pass out to Alex Navavi is caught up at the 38-yard line, so the offsides won't matter as the Bison pick up their first first down of the afternoon on the pass to Navavi. Yeah, and it looked like... They're running cover three in the secondary. Josh Johnson is, is up tight towards the wide receiver, then bails at the last second. But unfortunately, the Bison, or for the Crimson Storm, the Bison are just running a quick little stop route to the sticks, and Josh Johnson still backpedaling by the time the ball is caught. It's first and 10, OBU. 
Thompson turns, gives to Lambert, trying to pick his way right side, cuts it back up in the middle, and runs through Jalen Mays across midfield to the SNU 49-yard line for another first down, a pickup of 13 on the play for Lambert. Yeah, Lambert, good vision there. There's nothing in the backfield. I mean, there were Crimson Storm defenders reaching for his shoelaces. He puts his foot in the ground and turns up field for a first down. Wide receiver either side. Bison, heavy package tight end either side. Thompson, quick hitter outside. It's Charles Whitebear. Goes down to one knee to make the grab after a gain of two to the 47-yard line. White Bear, the sophomore out of Hazlitt, Texas. A, has a brother, I think, playing corner. Oh, brother Chase White Bear, so a sophomore. Yeah, you know, Luke, we've seen several pass plays from the Bison, but, but only two times have they just done traditional pass protection. They've been trying to get their quarterback on the run, disguise, disguising their pass, pass protection a little. Thompson takes a snap, turns, gives to Lambert. Met right at the 45-yard line by Emmanuel Obina. And a big stick there by Obina after a gain of two. Makes it third down and six. Yeah, Obina keeps his feet moving. You know, beginning of the season, Luke, that's one thing we talked about with this defense. In the right position, but not doing the little things like wrapping up, keeping your feet moving. We see a different defense now. Third and six. And a false start on the Bison as Charles White Bear was heading for the end zone. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Charles, Charles White Bear knew what route he was running. Unfortunately, so does the Crimson Storm defense now. So that'll There's back the Bison up five yards. Make it third down and 11 back at midfield. 52 seconds to go in the first quarter. Quite a bit of noise here for this Bethany crowd. Two wide to either side. Lambert is the back behind Thompson in the pistol set. Thompson, back to pass, has time. Looking, looking, has time. Looking to the far sideline, too tall. He was looking for Thomas Meadow. Threw his hands out of bounds. Fourth down for OBU. Yeah, and that's a, that's a pretty good pass. It's where it needs to be. It's away from the defender and high. Unfortunately for the Bison, unable to bring that in. He had room to catch and bring it down. Just slips through his hands. Don't know if it's just, it is just a little wet out there. But Crimson Storm getting the ball back. Defense standing tall. So the Bison moved 25 yards, but come up empty. The Villarreal on to punt with 30 seconds to go in the quarter. High wobbling kick. Joe Flores races up and makes the fair catch at the 19-yard line of Southern Nazarene. That's where the Crimson Storm will put it in play first and 10. Clock did not run for that play, so we still have 31 seconds to go <laughs> in the quarter. So SNU will get one more, at least one more play here in the first quarter going to the south in Bethany. Man, two, uh, two good Maybe underrated jersey combos in the GAC happening today. If you like jerseys. Yes, this is a much better personal take. This is a much better jersey combo for SNU than the inverse of the crimson tops and the gray bottoms. Agreed. Porter takes the snap. Gives to Carlos Zepeda, plowing his way up the middle. Gets all the way up to the 24-yard line. Gain of four on first down. Brings up second down and six. And a little bit of chippiness. You expect this when you play a big game against your rival. Good competition. Eight seconds on the clock. Looks like SNU's trying to get one more play in for the end of the quarter. And they're not going to do it. So that's how the first quarter comes to an end in Bethany. The Crimson Storm, the lone score on the board thus far. They lead this one 7-0 over Oklahoma Baptist. We'll be back. With the start of the second quarter after these messages, this is SNU Football. Renew is the University Counseling Center. We are located at 6710 Northwest 43rd Street, just north of the Webster Commons. Renew offers a variety of services, including individual counseling, couples counseling, and psychoeducational workshops. The first five sessions for students are free, and students will never pay more than $10 per session. Faculty counseling is just $40 per session, 
Renew is open Monday through Thursday from 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. and Fridays from 11 a.m. until 6 p.m. For more information, visit renew.snu.edu or email renew at mail.snu.edu. My favorite things about SNU was the relationships I was able to have with people, with professors, with friends. One thing that was purposely different about SNU was the integration of faith into the academics. I feel like I learned so much from that that helped prepare me for life after college, to be a husband and someday to be a father. It was a really, really transformational time in my life. My degree could have come from anywhere, but my relationships with people, I know I would not have gotten anywhere else. Go to snu.edu to apply or to schedule a visit. Welcome back to Bethany, the start of the second quarter at SNU Football Stadium. Luke McConnell, Landry Franks with a regular season finale. Thanks for joining us all season long here on the SNU Athletics YouTube channel. It's a delight to bring these games to you each and every week. Looking forward to the future of this program as well. 19 seniors honored today on Senior Day. Future is bright for this Crimson Storm bunch. Here, it's second and six. Aaron Fellows, the man in motion, Porter. Gives it to him around the near side. Runs through Luke Morrow once again and gains five yards up to the 29-yard line where it will be third down and one. Yeah, I'm just find, starting to find some space on the outside run. You know, in the first quarter that was a struggle, but end of last drive and certainly the beginning of this one, they are finding some success there. and It opens up the run game in the middle too. The more you can do that. Third and one for the Crimson Storm. Porter, a hard count. Trying to gauge the defensive alignment here. Seven seconds on the play clock. Porter takes a snap, pulls it out of the belly. Zapata runs on the outside. 30, 35, upfield, 40, 45, stays in bounds, 50, down the sideline, 30, 25, 20, finally chopped down. Inside the 20 yard line by Tanik Taylor but not before a huge gain for Gage Porter who did some fancy tap toe <laughs> tight rope walking down the sideline in front of his own bench. Well, and I think some of those Bison defenders were, were thinking they'd be able to bump him out of bounds, but he's so physical he stays in bounds. Three wide receivers left for Gage Porter from the Bison 17 yard line and clock issue. Or count, count how many Bison defenders there are. Making sure they have the right number of players. Yeah, unfortunate for the Crimson Storm. They had, they had the look they wanted. You can tell by the, their body language. No, no penalty. Redo first down. You don't see that very often. They kind of flag to double check. Yeah, very. Very odd situation there. But we won't go into the officiating. <laughs> Two wide receivers left, one to the right. Porter takes a snap, looks to the right. And he's going to run it up the middle, pulling tacklers with him down to the 12-yard line for another gain of five. You know, it's amazing to me, Luke. SNU runs the quarterback draw 10 times a game, probably and passes the ball 10 times a game. And still, opposing defenses think Gage Porter's gonna pass. And, and you, you do have to, every pass play for him could be a run, but a designed run, they, they just assume it's a pass and he always has uh, at least five yards in him. Porter fakes the sweep to Fellows. Now he pitches it out to Fellows late and didn't quite get it all the way to him. Fellows covered it up at the 15 yard line, but that's a loss of three from the 12-yard line. Yeah, and this is the second time we've seen that look. It's something they must practice. Porter did say, my bad on that one, but they like to, to run Porter kind of a I don't know, power with a lead blocker, and then the option there is a quick pass out to the single wide receiver. First time it worked well, second time, not enough space for him to really get the power on it he needs, luckily. Storm fall on it. Would have been a fumble if it was rolling around on the ground. Two on the play clock for Porter. He takes the snap, fakes the give to Smith. Option look outside, Donald May. 10, 5, 
touchdown! He's in! Donald May on the speed option on the outside. And the Crimson Storm go up two scores with 11.43 to go in the second quarter. I feel like I'm watching Florida State in the 90s, Luke. That was, that was just a classic speed option. Gage Porter maybe only takes six steps with the football and then pitches it. Donald May has a head of steam and no one in front of him runs into the end zone for the touchdown. Adam Atwell on for the extra point. Operation smooth. But he yanked it wide left. So the extra point no good. It's the Crimson Storm. If there's one blemish on this Crimson yeah. Storm bunch, it would be the kicking. Yeah. But the SNU has a 13-0 lead, 11.43 to go in the first half. We'll take time out and be back. This is SNU football. Eleven forty-three to go before halftime on Senior Day in Bethany, and it's all Crimson Storm thus far. Thirteen to nothing, Southern Nazarene with the lead already. One hundred and seventy-five yards of offense, one hundred and forty-nine of those on the ground, one hundred and three of those to Gage Porter, along with a touchdown, Donald May, the touchdown from fifteen yards out a moment ago, to give SNU the two-score lead over Oklahoma Baptist. Cameron Van Pruyen ready to kick this one away. Back deep for the Bison, Tanique Taylor and Tyler King. That one sails into the end zone. It'll be Bison football at their own 25-yard line. Let's take a look at the schedule around the conference today. The big game over in Arkadelphia, the Battle of the Ravine, 96th edition between Washita Baptist and Henderson State. That one at halftime right now. East Central leading Southeastern down in Durant, 14-0. Southern Arkansas leading Arkansas Monticello 7 0 right now. And Arkansas Tech trailing Harding, number two in the nation, the Bisons, 14 0. We'll get a score on that Battle of the Ravine in just a moment. Thompson, quick hitter over the middle to Michael Marshall. He's got the first down across the 35 to the 37 yard line before he's taken down aggressively by Jalen Mays. Yeah, and just the uh, RPO there. Quick slant inside, one read for the quarterback. He makes it, delivers a good ball for the first down. First and 10, Bison. Give is to Lambert, running left, taken down in the backfield. Cole McMahon recognized on senior day before the contest comes up with the tackle for loss. It's a loss of one back to the 36 yard line, second down and 11. Yeah, textbook middle linebacker play right there. You have a lineman coming at you, you stymie him, you get your hands in, and you release and you shoot at the feet of, uh, of the running back and he makes a play. Ball in the left hash, two wide right, one left for the Bison. Thompson claps his hands, pulls it out of the belly of Lambert, rolling to his left, fires it back over the middle. He's got Navavi who released up into the flat, and he's got the first down up to the 47-yard line of Oklahoma Baptist. Yeah, and I, I think there was supposed to be kind of a pick play that turned into a sit-down route. He had two defenders on him and found some open space. Reverse, flea flicker, Thompson looking down the sideline, and it is going to be caught by the tight end, Haven Lysel Stewart. 
The sophomore are deep into SNU territory at the 25 yard line. It went Lambert to Harris to Thompson to Lysel Stewart and a big pickup, 28 yards for the Bison. They're knocking on the door of the red zone. Thompson delivers a good ball there. Crimson Storm in decent position, but it's just a better throw. 9.45 to go before halftime. The Bison, their deepest penetration of SNU territory thus far. Trailing 13-0. Thompson takes a snap, gives to Lambert. Up the middle, met in the backfield. Ben Rutherford. Another tackle for loss on this Bison running attack. Back to the 27-yard line, a loss of two. Yeah, Rutherford not touched by anyone. Nobody gets hands on him. He's in the backfield as soon as the ball is given to the running back and makes a sure tackle. The Bison start one upperclassman along the offensive line today. Of the 23 on the roster, just four upperclassmen in the group. They brought in 12 offensive linemen in this year's recruiting class. A big point of emphasis, but it'll take some time for these guys to grow. Second and 12, Oklahoma Baptist. Thompson back to pass. Slot fade, looking for Nick Harris. He's got his man beat, and he's got it for the touchdown. Davian Houghton in coverage, and Nick Harris had a good break off the line, and a perfect throw from Aiden Thompson gets Oklahoma Baptist on the board. Yeah, Nick Harris just puts his foot in the ground one direction, comes back the other direction for the slot fade. It's a perfectly thrown ball by Thompson. Bison's on the board. What looked to be all controlled by Southern Nazarene, now closer than they want it to be. Villarreal's extra point up and good. So with 8.48 to go in the first half, 13 to seven, Southern Nazarene with the lead over Oklahoma Baptist. SNU offense coming up after this break. This is SNU football. Character, culture, and Christ have been the motto for Southern Nazarene University for many, many years. When I came as president, uh, I was really curious about those words and really curious to dig into the archives. In fact, a conversation on campus uh, one day with a visitor to our campus who asked that same question, what does character, culture, and Christ mean today? These days I like to talk about refining character. I think that uh, we're all in process. and. In those collegiate years, those years of a university experience, there's a great opportunity to refine character. It's a beautiful morning, Scotty, and we have an early game today. That injured list, it's getting longer by the minute. Not to mention, uh, there's apparently a nasty virus sweeping through the locker room. Yeah, but these players, they're in good hands. All of them need to feel their best this season, Scotty. Yes, they do, Jack, because this team is on track to win it all this year. Every day, Mercy's team is ready to take care of yours, bringing you the care you need now. Find out all the ways to access Mercy at mercynow.net. Welcome back to Bethany. 8.48 to go in the first half. Southern Nazarene leads Oklahoma out is 13 to seven. This homecoming senior day, festive atmosphere in Bethany. Huge crowd on hand on both sides of the stadium. Glad to bring it to you. Landry, well, probably one of the better atmospheres we've had in our five years. Oh yeah. Of calling games. Crowds loud, hardly any seats here in Bethany. Short kickoff, fielded by Braxton Bird at the 11. Picking his way up the middle. And he's going to be taken down across the 25-yard line at the 27. Scooter Baker in on the play. And now a little bit of extracurricular activity. Baker didn't like, well, I think, what he perceived as an SNU player knocking him down after as he was trying to get back up. Yeah, there seemed to be a little bit of scuffle even as that play was ending. Nothing, nothing worth throwing a flag for yet. But he'll take a quick cool down on the yeah, sideline real probably quick. Probably wise. SNU offense back on the field. Touchdowns on their last two possessions. Porter, back to pass, blitz off the edge, escapes a couple defenders, 
Fires it out into the flat. Aaron Fellows with a catch. Porter threw it nearly down, and Fellows all the way up near midfield. We'll see if Porter was down. The officials say he wasn't. Decision time for Chris Jensen on the far sideline. We'll see if he challenges this. Yeah. It would be a sack. I'm not sure that he was down. Doesn't look like it, and SNU's playing. Porter fires it wide open in the flats. Dalen Smith across the 40 inside the 35. And just like that, SNU at the Bison 33 yard line. Gage Porter giving us the Gage special today with some <laughs> of the decisions he's making and the plays he's making as well. Yeah, he gets away from that, that edge blit blitzer. It was a really creative blitz. They take their outside linebacker and kind of sneak him in at the last second. Gage Porter gets away from one, doesn't get away from the second, but somehow is able to get the pass off and complete. He threw it a long way, too. <laughs> That's true. First and 10 of the Bison, 33. Porter fakes to May. Up the middle he goes. And Scooter Baker there for the tackle on Porter after a gain of two down to the 31-yard line. Second and eight. Upcoming with 7.15 to go before halftime. I think Porter wanted to hand it to May, but kind of bobbled the snap there. Take the two yards and no fumble. Ball on the right hash for the Crimson Storm. Two wide receivers left, one right. Dalen Smith, the tight end to the left of the formation. Porter takes a snap. Speed option left. Pitches it outside. Donald May, he's got blockers inside the 20. Spins away. 15, 10, 5, touchdown! Poor tackling by the Bison. And Donald May with the speed. His second touchdown of the quarter. And they're going to go for two here to try to make it a two-score, two-touchdown game. Donald May and Gage Porter connecting on the option again, and Donald May just running with such speed. Bison are kind of left on their heels. Even got face mask on that play, but somehow turned it around and got into the end zone for his second score on the exact same play, just the other direction. Exceptionally blocked as well. SNU is going to have to burn a timeout. Didn't have the right personnel out there. Yeah, and some confusion on the sideline right after that touchdown. It looked like you had coaches holding up one, coaches holding up two. The extra point team was pretty much fully yeah. out there. You know, normally... Dustin Hayda wanting an explanation why the play clock didn't reset, but the 40-second play clock was running, so I don't, I don't yeah. think it should have been reset. But it's first time out burned for SNU in the half with 6.44 to go in the second quarter. But Landry, the speed option, just outstanding blocking on the outside as well. Yep. Lots of open space on the outside. You know, the first two outside runs to Asa Robertson sealed up. Nothing there. Two losses in a row. And Gage Porter's been so productive up the middle if you look at OBU's defense, they've got so many people in the box that the outside of the field is starting to really open up. And Donald Mays getting the ball five yards behind the line of scrimmage and has 20 yards of green grass in front of him. Coach Hayda mentioning to us in our conversation with him on Thursday about needing to block the perimeter well. And the jet sweeps have not gone well thus far, but the speed option considerably so, SNU from the left hash going for two. Porter rolling to the right, following Asa Robertson up, runs through a Bison defender into the end zone. The two-point conversion is good, and SNU back up 14, two scores, 21 to seven, with 6.44 to go in the first half. And Landry, right now, the SNU offense doing whatever they want to this Bison defense. Yeah, I mean, Luke, we just talked about how many people they're putting in the box. I was doing a quick count, and I think they had nine in the box, right? So you have all of these people, in it, and I know it's it's a goal line, right? Like, so the safeties are choked down. But Gage Porter sees it. What's his read? It's not inside, it's outside. And he follows one blocker, a wide receiver, around the edge for the easy two-point conversion. And they're just having their way. OBU has no response. They feel like they have to commit 
to the inside run, and now they're SNU's running the outside. And I guarantee you, if they start committing to the outside, Gage Porter's just going to read that defense and run right up the middle again. SNU already 247 yards of offense, averaging 9.2 yards per play, 182 of those on the ground. Gage Porter 105 yards on the ground. Donald May 78 yards on the ground thus far. Van Pruyen to send this one away to Tyler King and Tanique Taylor. And he blasts this one. It's going to be Taylor King from the goal line. King up the middle. He's taken down at the 22. And that's where the Bison will put it in play. First and 10. Actually mark him at the 21 yard line. The Bison got on the board on their last offensive possession. The slot fade to Nick Harris. Beautiful throw from Aiden Thompson. Let's see what the SNU defense can dial up here. Yeah. 6.38 to go. You'd love, if you're SNU, to get the stop here, turn around and drain the clock with another score before halftime. OBU having to use some trick plays to create some momentum last series. Lambert, the carry. He is stuffed in the backfield. David Omosigo back to the 17-yard line, and Omosigo continues his stellar play of late. Three tackles for loss last week at Monticello. That gives him 10 and a half for the season. Man, yeah, playing really well. If, if you're the Bison, you, if you can't run the football, it's going to be a long day. They've had success through the air, but you can key in on that. Thompson. Back to pass. Omasigo held no call, looking deep, and it is going to be incomplete. Johnson was there, had an interception in his grasp against Michael Marshall, and now Johnson is down yeah. right around midfield. Looked like Omasigo got held trying to get to Thompson. What else are you going to do? <laughs> Tackle for loss. I think Johnson jumping up to make that play when he landed, I think, is... Helmet hit the ground pretty tough. Shoulder, maybe. He's sitting up. Checked out with Michael Lombard, the athletic trainer for football. It seems to be okay as he walks off under his own power. Johnson married as a kid, recognized before the mm -hmm. game. His last game here in Bethany. Think about some of these players when they came in. Many of them have children. Many of them are married. And you know, when they're freshmen, 18-year-olds straight out of high school, and now seeing some of them walk this, this afternoon, it's been a, been a cool thing to see the progression. Third and 14 for the Bison. Two wide right, one left. Thompson back to pass. Quick slant to Marshall. He's got it, and he's got the first down as he got inside of Holden Hill up to the 33-yard line. A huge conversion there for Oklahoma Baptist. Yeah, no one in the middle on that play. SNU running kind of a zone man hybrid. OBU finding holes in, in the middle of the field for the first down. Johnson back out on the field for SNU. First and 10 from the middle of the field. Thompson looking outside, looking for McCurley. Oh, and Johnson nearly had an interception there. If he had turned his head a bit sooner, he absolutely would have. That was not a great throw from Thompson. And Gavin McCurley, the freshman out of Roanoke, Texas, the intended receiver, second and 10. Yeah, and Johnson is – the way they're running the, the defense right now is pretty interesting to the single – Wide receiver side, they seem to be playing man. Johnson certainly is a trustworthy secondary. They switch to, yeah, backside is man. Three wide right, one left for the Bison, second and 10. Thompson gives to Lambert, running left, and he met Carter Brock, and that meant he was going backwards. Another tackle for loss on this Bison rushing attack. It'll be third and 11. Yeah, the former wrestler getting his feet moving. Used to that kind of physicality, making the play, driving his feet. Third and 11. SNU with already five tackles for loss in the first half. 
4.50 to go before halftime. Three wide receivers to the right, one to the left. Now Lambert comes in motion to the near side, giving four wide receivers out here. Thompson looking for the quick bubble to Lambert, and he picks his way for a few up to the 38-yard line, but that is it. Gain of six for the Bison. It's fourth down. Luckily for the Crimson Storm defense, the Bison, they might be going for it here, maybe a hard count. Here comes the punt team. They, they motion to quads, usually in quads. You see what we saw right here. We've talked about this before, but you just have a, a quick screen, wide receiver screen with three blockers in front of them. But I don't think SNU had the numbers, and if there's a different route off of that, SNU's going to have to clear that up. When they motion to quads, what, what's the coverage going to be? Fourth down, Villarreal. High spiraling end over and kick. This chases Flores back to the 16. Flores spins off one tackler, keeps his footing, and he's going to be taken down from behind at about the 17-yard line. A lot of running for the Albuquerque native. Just got one on the return. So 3.48 to go in the half for the SNU offense. And Landry, this is just prime position for this Crimson Storm offense. Yeah, they have four minutes, two timeouts, and they plan on using three minutes and 48 seconds to march down the field and score. Uh, this is... This is what you practice you know, when you do long drive drills or just um, team drills. You usually have four minutes to try to get the ball down the field. Practice this all the time. This is ideal for this Crimson Storm offense. Three wide receivers to the left for Gage Porter. Donald May to his right. He gives it to May, running left. He's got blockers outside and a lot of space. 30, cuts it back inside of the 35, up to the 41-yard line. And Landry, like you mentioned, too many people in the box. It's just two wide receivers on two corners on the outside, and Donald May is going to pick up huge yards every time. And yeah, Donald May motions over. No one comes with him. So they motion over. They have eight people in the box. They have a safety in a corner on the, the run side. So they have... Two for two, blocking-wise, and then Donald May running free. The backside safety or corner has to come over and make the play. This is exactly what SNU drew up in their game plan this week. OBU's forced to push some people outside of the box now. Porter following his blockers and is taken down by Luke Morrow after a gain of two up to the 43-yard line. 107 yards on the ground for Gage Porter. That 24-yard run by May puts him over 100 yards with 102 thus far. 2.45 to play, second and eight for the Crimson Storm from their own 43-yard line. Ball on the left hash. Wide receiver to either side, May back in there as well. Aaron Fellows on the right side of the formation in tight by Dalen Smith. Now Robertson motions up top, all three wide receivers to the right. Porter. Speed option, speed handoff again to May on the right side, trying to get outside, grabbed by the face mask. No flag came in. He got across midfield down to the 48-yard line. It's a first down for SNU. But no flag comes out on the face mask. That was pretty clear from our vantage point. Yeah, I, I think it's just the way his head was turned when he was spinning. Those referees... Couldn't see the front side of the face mask like we could, but a first down for the Storm. From the Bison, 48-yard line. Porter rolls out, back to pass, sets up, fires it on the crosser to Colby Branch. He is crushed on the hit by Chase Whitebear, but he held on at the 37-yard line. Big hit there by Whitebear. Yeah, Branch great. will come off, but a big play there by Branch, the junior out of Fairfield, Texas. A tremendous catch through contact. You could, you could see him wanting to take the next step, but unable to. Great hands, physical play here from the Bison and the Storm. Adding a few seconds on the clock because of the big hit. Just stopping the clock to get the you know, potential head injury off the field. 142 on the clock, SNU first and 10 at the Bison 37-yard line. Fellows goes in motion to the top. Porters back to pass. 
pressured, escapes, lots of space, left side, 30, 25, and coasts out of bounds inside the 25 at the 24-yard line. 13 more for Gage Porter and the Crimson Storm offense. Nine in the box. Gage Porter runs, scrambles for 13 yards. Nine in the box. What can you do? I mean, if you're a defensive coordinator, you got to be pulling your hair out. Put more people in the box to stop him, and he just scrambles for 13. Two wide receivers right. Fellows in tight as well on the right side. Now he comes in motion to the left. Braxton Bird in the backfield with Porter. Speed option. Porter is swallowed up quickly this time. Brett Carhew takes down Porter for a loss of four back to the 28-yard line. Dustin Hayda quickly burning a timeout with 1.17 to go in the half. And, and things getting a little chippy. Now, normally when you get some chippiness like this consistently, the refs will throw kind of a, a flag on someone or maybe on both teams to tell everyone to cool it. But no flag there. Carhew got right inside of Dalen Smith right off the – Snap. Carhu, the sophomore out of Frisco, Texas, having a tremendous year leading the conference in tackles for loss and sacks coming into this afternoon. 16 and a half tackles for loss, 10 and a half sacks. One of the best tied for third in the nation with that 10 and a half sack number. So SNU facing second down and 14 from the Bison 28 yard line. Still 123 to play in the quarter. SNU down to one timeout remaining. Wind has died down considerably mm -hmm. since pregame. All the flags across the way hanging limp. Goalpost flags kind of fluttering. Still light south breeze, but wind not really a factor anymore as it currently stands. Quick update from Arkadelphia. It's 21 to 13. Henderson State with the lead and the Reddies driving inside the Tigers' 10-yard line looking to go up. Two scores, late third quarter. And that be a big upset as far as playoff potential goes. Two wide receivers left, one right for Porter. Back to pass, has time, fires it across the middle. It's low and incomplete. Threw it behind Fellows. And now flag, late flags come in. Will McCune was thrown to the ground. Brett Carhew. Might be the guilty party. He's screaming at the officials right now. Let's see if this becomes offsetting or if it's only going to be on Carhew. McCune giving a thumbs up to the SNU sideline. Yeah, I didn't I didn't see what happened there. Just saw the aftermath. But it's been going on the whole time. He's still in the game and he's furious. Still talking to the refs. So the penalty is actually going to be on Amir Johnson, number 98, the freshman out of Tyler, Texas. So the unnecessary roughness bails SNU out of a third and 14 and now makes it first and 10 at the Bison 14. Chippiness continues. Yeah. So keep your eyes on the big fellows in the trenches both ways now. Porter, back to pass. Trying to escape Carhew, he does. Now he evades back to the left side. He's got to pay to wide open in the end zone. Now fires to the sideline. Robertson the catch inside the 10 and dives down inside the five. It'll be second down and one from the five yard line. Porter had Carlos Zapata wide open in the end zone. Couldn't get it to him, Yeah, but he did get it to Asa Robertson. Gage Porter wanting to go fast here. Coach Hayden said, slow down a little bit. SNU with one timeout left, 50 seconds. The clock is running. And now SNU is going to use their final timeout. Gage Porter and Dustin Hayda having a spirited conversation in the huddle there. We, you know, we talked to Coach Hayda in the pregame about you know his relationship with Gage. I mean, he's he's been here the whole time, Gage has, and 
you know, they have a special relationship, you know, just having gone through so much together. And, you know, the offensive coordinator, the quarterback's coach, you're going to have that with your quarterback regardless, but especially when it's somebody who means as much to the program as Gage does. Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong here, Luke. I think Coach Hayda coached him in high school for a little bit, a couple seasons there. But, uh, you know, we ask, we ask things like, uh, you know, when Gage – makes a decision that seems kind of questionable. What do you say to him afterwards? He's like, I don't say anything to him. You know, I let him be Gage. And uh, I don't think he would have said that when Gage was a freshman, but he's certainly saying it this year and, and last year. And when you have a talent like Gage Porter and a trusted quarterback, you just, you just let him play football and you just try to coach him up in moments that you can. Officially second and one from the five-yard line. 47 seconds left in the half. Ball is on the left hash for the Crimson Storm. Two wide receivers to the right. And they come out with Zapata behind Porter in the pistol and Fellows to his left. Standing at the 10-yard line. And now whistles blow from the back corner. Oh, kids football. Kids on the hill can't corral the pass, and it comes down into the field of play. So we'll reset and do it again. Porter motions Fellows out to the left. Now he comes speed to the right. Porter cuts it up the middle, and great blocking, and SNU's in for another touchdown. It's Gage Porter's second of the afternoon, and the Crimson Storm go up big, 27-7. to I think he's run the – the same play on all of his scores. You know, it's just a quarterback designed run with lead blockers in front of him, and he waltzes into the end zone untouched. The Bison unable to stop this Crimson Storm rushing attack. Atwell on for the extra point. Yanked his last attempt and puts that one up and through. So 43 seconds to go in the opening half. It's all SNU right now, 28 to seven. The Crimson Storm with the lead over Oklahoma Baptist. The Bison do get the ball to start the third quarter. So the Crimson Storm need to play tough defense here, Landry, avoid the double dip and just maintain the momentum that they have right now. Yep, nothing, nothing crazy here, just Sound, fundamental, you know, probably three or four plays. Maybe just one run. Depends on what OB wants to do. I imagine they'll try to take a shot, being down 28 to 7, needing to catch up. No costly penalties either. You don't want to lose a guy for, for a game for something foolish, but you also don't need to unintentionally pass interference or face matches. Sound fundamental football, 43 seconds, get into halftime, get coached up, and come back and finish this game off. Porter, 122 yards and two scores on the ground. Donald May, 111 yards and two scores on the ground. 232 yards on the ground for SNU today. 316 in the first half. Van Pruyen, ready to send this one deep to Taylor and King for the Bison. Run up and the boot. This one will carry Taylor into the end zone. He's gonna be tripped up from behind inside the 15 yard line. Tremendous hustle by Michael Okawobi, the sophomore from Plano. Trip Taylor up for his hubris at the 14 yard line. And 11 yards of field position lost there by the Bison. When you're running full speed like that, against a returner who's running full speed, you're, you're really l jumping for their back heel so you can clip it and make them trip themselves, and that's exactly what happens on that play. Bison in bad field position with just a few seconds to go in the half. Two wide to either side. Thompson checks to the sideline with 10 on the play clock. Crimson Storm playing three high safeties here. Thompson back to pass. Has time, checks it down in the flat to Lambert, and he's... Undercut by Ethan Miner up at the 18, 19 yard line. Bison not gonna burn a timeout. They'll just 
hustled to the line of scrimmage. Under 30 seconds to go, Michael Marshall kind of hobbled off there. The Bison leading receiver. Here's Thompson, back to pass. Fires it, looking to the outside, and it's dropped, incomplete. On the play was Kai McCarty. He dropped that one over on the far sideline. Third down and five. Here comes the run. Can't afford to have another incompletion and potentially an SNU return. Looks. Thompson claps, gets the snap, rolls out to the right, fires it up ahead to Nababi, and he's blasted by Jalen Mays up at the 33 yard line. That'll stop the clock momentarily with eight seconds to go before halftime, and now Oklahoma Baptist will use their first timeout of the half. Oklahoma Baptist being risky here. Getting the completion, that's what they need. Still got a long way to go with eight seconds. Maybe maybe you could take a couple attempts at the, at the end zone here. One more chunk play and then a Hail Mary. Are we allowed to say that for SNU and OBU Hail Marys or are we just... We have some uh, Protestant term. I don't know. What would be a good Protestant <laughs> term for that play? That's right. I, don't, I have no idea. Should we call it an <laughs> Our Father? Our Father, yeah. A uh, Lord's Prayer. There you go. There you go. Man, Luke, just quality radio we're putting out today. Absolutely. That's what we do here. <laughs> Took us five years to be comfortable enough to have that banter. <laughs> Eight seconds to go. Thompson under pressure. Brock plows him at the 20-yard line. And it's incomplete. Brock came in high. Thompson looking for a targeting flag. There is none to be found. And that, frankly, pretty fortunate. Brock is a tall linebacker at 6'2", 220. And he hit the 6'5", Thompson, right in the face. Maybe just a little below, but, man, that yeah. a, if a flag came out right there, it would not have been unjustified. I think what saved him was he did launch with his hands, even though there is helmet contact. Thompson flips it to his running back. That's Seth Medina. He's taken down by Brock in the backfield. A massive loss of seven, and that's how the first half ends in Bethany, and the Crimson Storm are feeling it right now as they take a 28 to seven lead into the locker room over their rivals, Oklahoma Baptist. And Thompson yelling out and gesticulating toward the officials as he heads to the locker room. That was Interesting to say the least. But what a half for the Crimson Storm. All the energy, all the momentum on this side of the field right now as they take a 28-7 lead into the locker room. We'll take it. It'll be an extended halftime today with the senior day festivities and homecoming band and everything in between. 28 to 7 again our score at halftime so extended halftime today so we'll take a little bit longer of a break than normal here at halftime and we'll come back with scores from around the league we'll break down the first half and get you ready for the second half of action from a very lively and charged senior day homecoming football game in Bethany again at halftime the Crimson Storm lead this one 28 to 7 we'll be back with more analysis at halftime after these messages.
Character, culture, and Christ have been the motto for Southern Nazarene University for many, many years. When I came as president, uh, I was really curious about those words and really curious to dig into the archives. In fact, a conversation on campus uh, one day with a visitor to our campus who asked that same question, what does character, culture, and Christ mean today? These days I like to talk about refining character. I think that we're all in process and in those collegiate years, those years of a university experience, there's a great opportunity to refine character. It's a beautiful morning, Scotty, and we have an early game today. That injured list, it's getting longer by the minute. Not to mention, uh, there's apparently a nasty virus sweeping through the locker room. Yeah, but these players, they're in good hands. All of them need to feel their best this season, Scotty. Yes, they do, Jack, because this team is on track to win it all this year. Every day, Mercy's team is ready to take care of yours, bringing you the care you need now. Find out all the ways to access Mercy at mercynow.net. Renew is the University Counseling Center. We are located at 6710 Northwest 43rd Street, just north of the Webster Commons. Renew offers a variety of services, including individual counseling, couples counseling, and psychoeducational workshops. The first five sessions for students are free, and students will never pay more than $10 per session. Faculty counseling is just $40 per session. Renew is open Monday through Thursday from 9 a.m. to 8 p.m., and Fridays from 11 a.m. until 6 p.m. For more information, visit renew.snu.edu or email renew at mail.snu.edu. One of my favorite things about SNU was the relationships I was able to have with people, with professors, with friends. One thing that was purposely different about SNU was the integration of faith into the academics. I feel like I learned so much from that that helped prepare me for life after college, to be a husband and someday to be a father. It was a really, really transformational time in my life. My degree could have come from anywhere, but my relationships with people, I know I would not have gotten anywhere else. Go to snu.edu to apply or to schedule a visit.
This is the Week 10 GAC Rewind. I'm Chase Hartzell. Harding defeated East Central 48-7 after picking up 528 yards on the ground. Running backs Blake De La Cruz and Braden Jay rushed for 112 yards and 104 yards respectively in the win, while quarterback Cole Keelan had 58 yards on the ground and three touchdowns. All seven of Harding's touchdowns came on the ground, including this 27-yard run by Jay at the beginning of the third quarter. Here's the call from Billy Morgan on the Harding Sports Network. And now here is the toss left side for Jay at the 20, 15 left sideline, 10, 5, touchdown Harding. Braden Jay, 27 yards, and the Bisons now lead 27 to nothing with 9.58 left in the third quarter. Washita rushed for 340 yards, and the defense and special teams forced five turnovers in a 55-14 win over Oklahoma Baptist. Kendall Givens led the charge against the Bison with 22 carries for a career-high 199 yards and four touchdowns. Tigers linebacker Dawson Miller had a standout performance on the day with nine tackles and this red zone interception as called by Rex Nelson on the Washita Football Network. Third down and three from the 13-yard line of Washita. Washita holds a 14-7 lead, 12-40 left in the first half. Oklahoma Baptist sets up on the near hash mark. Thompson passing in a crowd, picked off. It is picked off by Washita. Coming up with it for the Tigers, Dawson Miller. And the senior has a big interception on senior day. Southern Arkansas defeated Northwestern Oklahoma State 42 to 14. SAU led 35 to nothing at halftime before Northwestern scored its first touchdown late in the third quarter. The Mule Riders controlled the game with 491 total yards of offense. Seth Johnson caught four passes for 86 yards, including a 50-yard touchdown reception for the first score of the game. Southern Arkansas running back Jarek Scales led his team to the comfortable victory with 192 all-purpose yards and three rushing touchdowns, including this 33-yard touchdown run at the end of the first quarter as called by Dan Gregory of the Mule Rider Sports Network. Coming up on four minutes to play in the opening quarter. Scales now shifts from the left to the right of his quarterback. Barton takes the snap, gives off to Scales. Up the middle, got the first down, breaks free. 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown, Jarek Scales. They uh, slowed him down just a little bit at the line of scrimmage, but when he slipped through, he was gone. Henderson State dominated southwestern Oklahoma State 56 to nothing giving the Reddies their second straight shutout win. Quarterback Andrew Edwards went 18 of 25 passing for 291 yards and four total touchdowns, with Chris Hatzes grabbing six receptions for 147 yards and one score. The Reddies' defense tacked on two extra touchdowns with Derrick Rose Jr. and Paul Manning each recording a pick six. Here is one of Henderson's first quarter touchdowns as called by Blake Smith of the Henderson State Sports Network. Now Jackson goes in motion slot left side, Edwards looking left, and steps up, going to take off running, inside the 10, inside the 5, he's got the first down, and he's got the touchdown, Reddies. Andrew Edwards, a 15-yard touchdown run. Arkansas Tech edged past southeastern Oklahoma State 14-7 after two impressive goal line stands by the defense. Wonderboy quarterback Tay Gatewood completed 17 of his 22 pass attempts for 134 yards and rushed for one touchdown. Deuce Wise ran for 97 yards on 15 carries, and Javon Love recorded two tackles for loss, a sack, and a forced fumble. Here's one of those Wonder Boy goal line stands, as called by Sam Strasner on River Country KCJC. Ryan Hurt is the running back, Weston Conaway the quarterback. Conaway with the football, gives to Hurt. Hurt tries did the middle, make it. will not make it. He did not get there. Goal line stand for Arkansas Tech again. again. The second time in the first half, the Wonder Boys defense turns away southeastern Oklahoma State, and the Arkansas Tech offense gets the ball back with 8.59 to go in the second quarter with Arkansas Tech's 7 to nothing lead intact. Southern Nazarene took down Arkansas Monticello 41-14, thanks to 600 yards of total offense. Dalen Smith recorded four receptions for 134 yards and two touchdowns from quarterback Gage Porter, who threw for 194 yards and ran for 132 
to break the all-time Crimson Storm rushing record. Here is one of the four Gage Porter touchdowns, a 35-yard pass to Smith, as heard from Jimmy Sledge on the UAM broadcast. Throws a pass complete to the tight end at the 20, to the 15, to the 5. Going to be down close to the end zone. He is in for the touchdown. Wow. Number 84, Dalen Smith. It's almost like a shuttle pass as Porter starts to take off running toward the line of scrimmage and just pushes it to the tight end. By then, the linebackers have already committed to the run, and he has been wide open this afternoon. This is the final week of the regular season in the Great American Conference, which means there are plenty of great rivalry matchups to go around. This day starts out at 1 o'clock with Battle of the Ravine, Henderson State at Washita. There are four games kicking off at 2 o'clock, including Harding at Arkansas Tech, East Central at Southeastern Oklahoma State, Oklahoma Baptist at Southern Nazarene, and Arkansas Monticello at Southern Arkansas. The lone 3 o'clock kickoff on the day will be Southwestern Oklahoma State at Northwestern Oklahoma State. This has been the Week 10 GAC Rewind. I'm Chase Hartzell. And welcome back to Bethany. Halftime ongoing, about five minutes before the start of the second half. The Crimson Storm leading Oklahoma Baptist 28-7 at halftime. Luke McConnell, Landry Franks with you. Senior day, homecoming. It's been a festive atmosphere. It's been a in chippy, intense game thus far, and the Crimson Storm are doing everything right right now, Landry. Yeah, they have everything going. Defensively, they're playing tough. They're uh, limiting this OBU offense to, to very little. Uh, minus one drive, OBU has has hardly been able to get a first down, and uh, SNU playing really well on the defensive side of the ball and just having their way on the offensive side of the ball. Run game is uh, is going outside, inside, whatever Crimson Storm offense wants to do, it is doing. And uh, great first first half for the Crimson Storm. <laughs> Not so much for OBU, but still lots of time for the script to change. SNU 36 plays, 316 yards in the first half, 8.8 .8 yards per play. The Bison 27 plays, 143 yards, 5.3 yards per play. 75 of those coming on their lone touchdown drive in the first half. SNU punted on their first drive, scored touchdowns on their next four possessions. SNU 232 yards on the ground, 8.3 yards per carry. The Bison just 10 carries for 12 yards in the first half. 131 yards through the air for OBU, 84 through the air for SNU. No turnovers either way thus far. The Crimson Storm held the ball over 19 minutes in the first half. The Bison just under 11 minutes. Key for SNU, 5 for 6 on third down in the first half. The Bison, 3 for 6 on third down. Individually, Gage Porter, a huge day thus far. 16 carries, 122 yards, two scores. Donald May, 7 carries, 111 yards, and two scores. Porter again, 6 for 8 for 84 yards. Two catches, 39 yards for Dalen Smith. Two for 12 for Asa Robertson. One for 22 for Aaron Fellows. One for 11 for Colby Branch. Two tackles for loss for both Cole McMahon and Carter Brock in the first half. Part of uh, just a tremendous showing defensively thus far for SNU. Just nothing doing for the Bison running the football, and that has made them extra one-dimensional and, you know, against a team that, you know, has improved defensively. SNU has six tackles for loss in the first half, and they've made the Bison one-dimensional, and that's made it so much easier on the defense knowing that the Bison have to throw the ball. Yeah, that's the only way they've had success. I think they've had two runs for first downs in the first half, and one of those was was a play that was kind of dead to rights and the running back got free. Uh, so what are, you, what are you supposed to do if you're OBU? You've got to throw the football. But this secondary for Mess and you, who I, I think Luke and I'm sure you agree is, has gotten better. You know, if we think back to the beginning of last season in particular, a lot of the same guys, uh, especially in the corner position, improving, improving this year, they've been solid all year. Uh, they've been a great secondary and certainly shown it today against a really good passing offense there's really nowhere for them to go they got to maintain that here in the second half but OBU I 
don't think they're going to just magically be able to run the football in the second half. I'd be surprised if anything opened up. They're going to have to try to be creative to make something happen. It's been a struggle both ways for OBU in the first half. We'll see if that continues, if SNU can keep it going in the second half. The Bison will get the ball to start the second half. SNU fortunate to still have the services of Carter Brock. Uh, just talking to one of the official supervisors downstairs, <laughs> pretty much everybody agreed that it should have been uh, a targeting call late in that first half for his hit on Aiden Thompson, but it was not, and SNU plays, and we all play on here in the second half. But things have been chippy, Landry. Uh, expect them to stay yeah. chippy into the second half. Let's do a quick check on scores from around the conference. Henderson State up by 10 on Washita Baptist. Under a minute to play, 31-21. The Tigers trying valiantly to come back. They just got a first and goal inside the five-yard line with 50 seconds to play. So we'll see what the Tigers are able to do. They'll need an onside kick regardless of what happens here in the next few minutes. East Central, 14-0 after one, 14-0 at halftime as they have held Southeastern in check, sacking Bryce Fields three times in the first half. Halftime in Magnolia, 30-10. Southern Arkansas over Arkansas Monticello. The Mule Riders have rushed for 200 yards thus far. Just into the third quarter for Harding and Arkansas Tech. And as you'd expect, the number two team in the nation, the Harding Bisons, leading this one 42 to nothing thus far. Alva hosting Northwestern and Southwestern today. Looking for both teams looking for their first and only win of the season. And it's 7-0 Northwestern late in the first quarter up there. Definitely expect a feisty one there. But Landry could be a feisty one here in the second half. What does SNU need to do to keep composure? Uh, they need to make sure they don't have any penalties that cost them uh, yardage or give free yardage to OBU, but they just need to keep doing what they're doing. They're being more physical. They're playing uh, the, the game they want to play both offensively and defensively, defensively and they, they need to maintain that and stay the course. Nothing needs to change, but their focus and effort needs to remain the same. Cameron Van Pruyen kicks this one away for SNU. It'll be Tanique Taylor from the goal line for Oklahoma Baptist angling near to the SNU sideline, and he's going to be tripped up across the 20-yard line. And the Bison will put it in play first and 10 at the 21-yard line. Got a bit of an extended offensive huddle, probably uh one last battle cry as the Bison offense makes its way onto the field. Just a quick update from Arkadelphia. Washington Baptist just scored a touchdown, missed the extra point with 44 seconds to go, so now they need a touchdown and can't tie with a field goal. Aiden Thompson takes a snap, quick hitter, and it's intercepted! Tavian Houghton jumped the slant, and it's a pick six for the Crimson Storm! 12 seconds into the second half! Oh my goodness! Yeah, this is the, the RPO they've run successfully several times, and if you only got one play that's working, eventually the defense is going to key in on it. They throw the slant, and it's just jumped! Easy read, simple. Missing uh, one person, Gage Porter running out there to uh, fulfill his responsibilities. I don't think this is normally his job, but he is the up back right now. Oh my goodness. <laughs> the, kick, the kick team needed a blocker and Gage Porter is putting himself in at the end of the line of scrimmage. And <laughs> holds up well, Makes and that well block. puts up the extra point through. So 12 seconds into the quarter, SNU extends their lead to 35 to 7. 14:48 to go third quarter. We'll take a timeout and come back after these messages.
Character, culture, and Christ have been the motto for Southern Nazarene University for many, many years. When I came as president, uh, I was really curious about those words and really curious to dig into the archives. In fact, a conversation on campus uh, one day with a visitor to our campus who asked that same question, what does character, culture, and Christ mean today? These days, I like to talk about refining character. I think that we're all in process. and. In those collegiate years, those years of a university experience, there's a great opportunity to refine character. Welcome back to Bethany, 35 to seven. Southern Nazarene with the lead over Oklahoma Baptist. It's over in Arkadelphia, Henderson State. Snaps a six game losing streak to Washita Baptist and they have won the 96th Battle of the Ravine, 31 to 27. We've got a field storming in Arkadelphia as the Henderson State students have stormed the field. Cool scene there, and the Reddies might have ruined, just ruined their arch rivals' hopes for a playoff berth. We'll see if they just punch their own ticket to the playoffs themselves. Here, though. Van Pruyen, another kickoff. This one's going to be King from the goal line. Angling to the near side. He's got space and speed. 40, 45, and Van Pruyen with a nice tackle up near midfield, but a great return there for Taylor King. But the cheer was much louder for the tackle by Van Pruyen right. than it was for the return by King. That's right. You love to see a kicker get a tackle, especially when they get up right after. You don't want an injured kicker. But uh, you love the... The aggressiveness, you know, normally kickers uh, tend to shy away from some contact, but not today. And he didn't get juked out of his socks either. Uh, that's good, right. Good that's leverage, right. good, good positioning. So the pick six by Tavian Houghton. Returned for the touchdown. Gives SNU the 35-7 lead. Aiden Thompson takes a snap, rolling left. Under pressure, drops it off to White Bear, and he gets down inside the SNU 40-yard line. They'll mark him down right at the 40-yard line. Gain of eight on first down for OBU. Second down and two. Yeah, and you got to stay mentally disciplined here. Yes, you have the big lead, 28 points, but still a full half of football left. Lambert goes in motion to the right. Now here comes White Bear in motion. They run a reverse. Nick Harris has it running left, and he's going to be taken down a short gain for Harris, just three yard, four yards down to the 36 yard line. Good pursuit by Emmanuel Obina for SNU, but it is enough for the first down for Oklahoma Baptist. Yeah, reverse, you're staying mentally sound. Yes, they get the first down, but no big play out of that. Ben don't break here for the SNU defense. Two wide either side for Thompson. He's got the snap, looking left, fires a short out route to his wide receiver on the far side. That's Donovan Dixon, a sophomore out of Sugarland, Texas. Gain of four to the 32-yard line of SNU. Makes it second down and six. You can expect OBU to continue to run this short, quick pass game, trying to get chunk yards in a hurry. 13-15 to go, third quarter. Thompson takes a snap, rolling right. Under pressure from Nick Blanchard, fires it behind Alex Nababi, and it's incomplete. Seth Spruill with a nice hit as the ball arrived. Brings up third down and six. Yeah, very nearly bobbled and intercepted again. Been really impressed with the pass coverage today from this Crimson Storm defense. Very little space downfield in particular for big shots by OBU. SNU jumps, free play for Thompson, looking for Nabavi. It's intercepted by Josh Johnson, but David Omasigo jumped off side, so that will bring the play back and make it third down and one. Thompson, some of these deep balls today has not, but then the touchdown has kind of shortchanged a few of them. Josh Johnson in great position there. So that makes it third down and one. Down at the SNU 27 yard line. Bison remains spread out too wide to either side. 
Lambert, the running back beside Thompson. Bison check to the sideline for the signal. Thompson takes it, gives it to Lambert. Up the middle, man in the hole by Obina. No gain on the play. Fourth down for the Bison. Yeah, they pull their guard to clear out Obina, but Obina's faster than the guard. He's in the hole before the, the pulling guard is able to even make contact with him. Jesse Fairchild a little slow getting up for the Crimson Storm. He got planted by right tackle Jake Sitzler, who's 6'7", 355. That couldn't have felt good. Fourth and one. Bison going for it. Thompson rolling right. Fires in the flat. He's got Harris inside the 20-yard line, slung down by Josh Johnson inside the 20. And the Bison inside the red zone for the first time today, which is not a great spot for the Bison offense. Just 10th in the conference in red zone conversions, 25 of 37 with 19 touchdowns, and just 10 of 19 in the red zone over the last five games. Pretty typical for a pass-heavy offense to kind of slow down when the field gets crunched. Two wide either side, everybody in tight. Now Lambert splits way out to the left. Thompson motioning him up toward the line of scrimmage. Five on the play clock. Thompson takes the snap. It's low. Fires it quickly to the right side. He's got Nabavi at the 15. Picked up and slammed to the turf by Johnson. And a flag comes in. And Josh Johnson's going to be flagged for unnecessary roughness. Yeah, you can, you can bring someone down. But you cannot lift them off yeah. their feet and slam them yes. down. It is the, the up and down motion that will get the flag every time. These are those penalties that you can't have. You have the lead and you need to be mentally disciplined. Josh Johnson in great position as he always is. Needs to lock in on those last few moments of a play. It's first and goal for the Bison from the eight yard line, 11.39 to go third quarter. Two wide to the left, one to the right. Sam Sharp the tight end goes to the left side of the formation. Lambert is the back with Thompson. Thompson pulls it out of the belly of Lambert, rolls right and throws it at the feet of Sharp incomplete. No hope for that play. Second and goal coming up. The Crimson Storm defense in the red zone has been great this year. Second in the conference in red zone defense, allowing scores on just 26 of 37 trips. No red zone points in two of the last three games if you remove the Washita game. And if you remove the Washita game, just one red zone trip allowed against those two opponents, East Central and Arkansas Monticello. Three wide left, one right now for the Bison. Second and goal. Thompson looking left, comes back to the right, looking to White Bear through his hands incomplete. Just inside the end zone, brings up third and goal for the Bison. Josh Johnson, man coverage all the way. Does a good job keeping his hands where they need to be, but also getting getting his hand in the middle of that pass to break it up. Third and goal for the Crimson Storm defense. Trying to keep the Bison out of the end zone with a 35-7 lead. Three wide left, one to the right for Oklahoma Baptist. Thompson, sprint out to the left in trouble and decked by Carter Brock! All the way back at the 16-yard line. Thompson slow to get up. The OBU coaching staff furious. There wasn't another unnecessary roughness call. Brock again got away with what could have been a targeting penalty in the first half. Could have maybe been another one there. That one a little bit more or less egregious, I should say. But again, another hard hit on the quarterback, and it's fourth and goal from the 17-yard line, and the Bison will go down 35-7. to seven. Thompson, back to pass, looking, end zone, intercepted! Kenyatta Richardson, the former Bison, out of bounds at the eight-yard line, and it's SNU football as the defense Turns Oklahoma Baptist aside. This is quite the definition of 
bend, don't break. You have a great third down play that puts OBU in a difficult position. Thompson has to throw that ball, has to put it towards the end zone. That's his only shot, and it is intercepted. SNU, not, maybe not the field position they could have had, but, you know, when last game of the season, if you got a chance to intercept it, are you going to – you're gonna knock it down, do that. The smart football player, you're gonna, you gonna pick one off. I'm, I don't blame him. Especially against your former team, Richardson <laughs> exactly. transferring down I-40 from OBU. Did not play a ton for the Bison. Just three tackles in three games last year for OBU. Here's Gage Porter in the offense. Gives it to Carlos Cepeda, and he is tracked down from behind, taken down. Might have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. Scooter Baker on the tackle for Oklahoma Baptist. Baker second in the nation in tackles coming into today's game. 115 this season. Back-to-back -back 19 tackle games. He's had more than 10, or at least 10, I should say, in six of his last seven. Really, from here on out, Luke, you can expect this SNU offense to not even be signaling, signaling a play in. There's about 20 seconds left on the play clock. Two wide right. Robertson goes in motion to the right. Porter takes a snap, runs right. Now he's escaping. Gets away from everyone, checks it down to Donald May right at the line of scrimmage. He might have given him one up to the nine-yard line. Porter tried to cut against the grain, but the whole Bison D line was there waiting for him, and Porter fortunate to escape without a safety there. Yeah, and you could see what Cage Porter wanted. He can feel the pressure on, on the backside, so he's trying to flip and go the other way, away from the routes that are all being run towards the Bison sideline. OBU playing good contain, a defensive end position. He has nowhere to go. He has to go back, and luckily gets that ball away. Ten on the play clock, nine minutes on the third quarter clock for the SNU offense. Porter takes a snap, rolls left, has Dalen Smith wide open, and air mailed him. Looked like he kind of put that in between Smith and Tisdale on the out, an incomplete pass, and brings up fourth down. He had Dalen Smith open there, but definitely air mailed that one. Both Smith and Tisdale open for first downs, and just too much on it. So the Bison forced the first punt of the afternoon for the Crimson Storm since the opening drive of the game. Adam Atwell standing five yards deep in his own end zone. Bison look ready to come after this one. High snap. Atwell's got it. The end over end kick. It bounces at midfield. And Tanique Taylor fields it and falls down at the 35, 37 yard line. So a nice punt for Atwell. Officially a 54 yard punt for the Crimson Storm sophomore. And that'll bring us to a timeout. 8.39 to go third quarter, 35 to seven. Southern Nazarene with the lead. We'll be back with more. This is SNU Football. Welcome back to Bethany. It's a party right now for the Crimson Storm as they lead this 35 to seven with 8.39 to go in the third quarter on Senior Day. It's also homecoming this weekend. Tons of activities 
on and around campus this weekend. The SNU men's soccer team in the GAC tournament title game tomorrow at 2. You can catch that on the GAC Sports Network with myself and Landry on the call. Should be a lot of fun. Had a lot of fun calling the semifinals last night, two really good games, and looking forward to a great matchup with Rogers State tomorrow afternoon at 2. Here, though, Oklahoma Bandits with their second possession of the second half. Two wide left, one right. Thompson fakes the give to his running back. Now he's under pressure, escapes the pocket, escapes to the outside, 35, and he scoots out of bounds at the 41-yard line. Thompson can run, officially the team's leading rusher outside of E.J. Moore as far as the players who are actually healthy. He is the leading rusher with 134 yards coming into today. Doesn't run a lot, but certainly can. Had seven rushes for 27 yards last week against Washita Baptist. He gets six on first down, which makes it second down and four from their own 41-yard line. With the amount of coverage SNU is doing, you might expect more running from Thompson. Thompson gives it to his back. That is Nick Anderson. The wide, junior wide receiver out of Owasso in the backfield. He gains two up to the 43-yard line where it will be third down and two for the Bison. Josh Johnson getting in on the run game. Had, had himself a great senior day. As an interception, that won't count, but nonetheless happened. Then Rutherford hobbles off for the Crimson Storm. Third and two. Tight formation for the Bison. Anderson bounces it outside. He's upended by Johnson, but just across the 45 to the 46. It's a first down for Oklahoma Baptist. Interior line for the Crimson Storm seems to have OBU snap count down. Wouldn't be surprised to see a hard count here soon. If you can draw someone offside. Under seven minutes to go, third quarter, 35-7. Southern Nazarene, Oklahoma Baptist with a first and 10. Their own 46-yard line, right hash. Two wide left, one right. Thompson takes a snap, back to pass. Under pressure from Omasigo, fires it. Looking down for Lysel Stewart, it's incomplete. Jalen Mays in coverage. A bit of grabbing there, but no flag flies, and it'll be second and 10. Referees letting... Shirt tugs both ways go today. No holding calls, not that I can remember. Not a lick thus far. Three penalties for 18 yards for SNU, two for 19 for the Bison. Two wide either side for OBU from the right hash. Thompson back to pass. Fires it in the flat to Anderson. Flag flies. From the far side, Anderson is into SNU territory at the 49-yard line. Let's check the flag. I think they're going to get Jesse Fairchild for lined up in the neutral zone. Had his hand past the football. So the five-yard penalty on the Crimson Storm will make it Second down and five at the 49-yard line, which is where the play resulted. So now second and five instead of third and five for Oklahoma Baptist. Fourth penalty for SNU. Three of those have been procedural, two offsides and one false start. From the right hash, Thompson back to pass. Has time. Escapes the pocket to the right. He will run and is knocked out of bounds by Emmanuel Obina. Thompson goes to the ground. No flag flies. Thompson helped to his feet by Crimson Storm players over there. It's former teammate Richardson. Picks up two down to the 47. So it'll be third down and three. Coming up on six minutes to play third quarter. It's been all SNU thus far this afternoon. Thompson again on the last play, having to run, use his feet because 
Everything's locked up downfield. It should have been a false yeah. start there on the tight end, Lysel Stewart. And now a timeout is going to be called by Oklahoma Baptist, but the Bison got away with one there. You, the Crimson Storm, you probably rather OBU have to burn a timeout than get the five-yard penalty, knowing that OBU is going to go for it on fourth down no matter what. Still 5.46 to go in the third quarter. SNU's only had the ball once in this third period. The three and out after the Kenyatta Richardson interception. But Landry, it just, it has such a different feel at 35 to seven with the pick six happening on the first play from scrimmage after halftime. It just totally changed the complexion of what could happen here in the second half. You're right, Luke. OBU coming out of the locker room with a lot of energy. The crowd, not on their feet, but certainly with the Bison. Pick six, you could see the sideline deflate and this sideline that we're on over here come to life even more than it already was. When you win in 35 to seven, things are a little bit more fun than normal. Absolutely, a sweet Caroline blast on the PA. Good times never did seem so good here for the Crimson Storm football program. Third and three for Oklahoma Baptist. New quarterback here, the give is to Lambert. That result is the same. A loss of one back to the 48 yard line. That's Jason Thomason, the sophomore from Caddo Mills, Texas, getting his first action of the game. And here, fourth down and four. It looks like the Bison will, in fact, punt. Interesting decision. Fourth and four. It's a manageable fourth down from the 50-yard line. Punting. S certainly got to watch for a fake here. Via Real, high and over end kick. Hits at about the 20 and skitters out of bounds at the 15 yard line. That's where SNU will have it first and 10 with 4.54 to go. And Landry, we'd uh, need to check the surrender index on that punt decision by Chris Jensen. Um, I'm confused. Last game of the season, surely you want to go down swinging and they've, they've played, played their starters to start the third quarter, but Got their backup warming up over there. I don't know, you know, might be something going on with Lambert. Who knows? Thompson, he came up hurting a little bit after that Excuse hit me. by Carter Brock on the last possession, but has seemed okay. Yeah, thanks for the correction there, Luke. Thompson, not Lambert. Two wide right, one left for SNU. Here comes Asa Robertson in motion. Porter fakes the give to him, following blockers up the middle. And he's going to be wrestled down after a short gain of one to the 17-yard line. Engage Porter in pursuit of a bit of history today as he tries to break his own conference rushing record, 1751, the number of yards a year ago. 122 yards today has him at 1666 right now. So he needs another 100 to be safe. Just 4.20 to go in the third quarter. Two wide right, one left, second and nine for SNU. Porter gives it to Robertson, cuts up field and is taken down after a gain of two up to the 19-yard line. So that makes it third down and seven. And Landry, one thing we haven't seen today, we haven't seen the dual quarterback package with Jarvis Davis out there as well. It's a package that was run to good effect over the past few weeks. Davis getting two rushing touchdowns last week at Arkansas Monticello. Some of that just in the quarter, one of those just in the quarterback role late in the fourth quarter, but it's been effective. We haven't seen it at all today, though. Coach Hayda always riding with what works. This is working, so Davis obviously a great player. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Porter takes a snap. Back to pass. 
Has space right. Now he comes back left, looking, fires it, looking deep for Fellows. He's got it in midfield. And Aaron Fellows inside the 40, and he's upended at the 32-yard line by Brandon Spencer, and a first down for the Crimson Storm. It looked like Gage Porter was looking for Colby Branch, who was wide open in the middle of the field. But as soon as he threw it, it was clear that that was not the target because Colby Branch is not 12 feet tall. <laughs> Yeah, and there seemed to be quite a bit of green grass. He's getting coached up over here. Uh, but Gage Porter, you know, it's pretty easy to be a wide receiver when your quarterback does a scramble drill every play. You know, defense playing secondary for eight seconds is pretty hard. Uh, and Gage Porter pushes the limits every time. Two and a half minutes to go third quarter. SNU Porter with the football. Cuts it up inside at the 30-yard line, and he's down to the Bison 27-yard line. Pickup of three makes it second down and seven. And on cue, Jarvis Davis into the game for the first time today. You could sense it, Luke. The coaches are right next door to us, so it is perhaps possible <laughs> that the offensive staff heard us talking about it and said, oh, we haven't run this yet. I can, uh, but can that's uh, probably doubtful. <laughs> almost guarantee that they don't care what we think. <laughs> Davis at quarterback, Porter at tailback. Davis gives it up the middle to Dalen Smith, the first man through. He gains two down to the 25 yard line. They'll mark him maybe just outside at about the 26. And now a flag comes flying in. Scooter Baker. Continues. Oh, and he just shoved his hand in the face of Will McCune, and I believe Scooter Baker just got ejected. We've got an SNU player down. That's the center, Braden Glover. So quickly, Zach Cizik. Over to the sideline to get some practice snaps in as Braden Glover getting checked out by the training staff right now. And Luke, we talked about this at halftime. It's the chippiness that's happening between this Crimson Storm offense and Bison defense. Some frustration building, a drive extending for the Crimson Storm. And not to excuse anything the Bison have done today in retaliation, it is, I would say it is probably noteworthy to note that Will McCune has been on the receiving end of both of these plays. Uh, first by Amir Johnson in the first half, and that one right there by Scooter Baker. Yeah, not I, to suggest at all that McCune is doing anything nefarious or anything like that. Just no. he is the one who's been the target. Sometimes when you're you're being physical, can be frustrating. And this offensive line has been very physical, but takes two to tango, Luke. Any personal foul, there's usually some kind of backstory to it. Confirmation, he is in fact ejected. Dual unsportsmanlike conduct penalties on Scooter Baker, and the southeastern transfer will spend the rest of. This afternoon's game on the sideline as the multiple penalties move this down inside the 10-yard line down to the 7-yard line. First and goal. So Zach Cizik takes over at center as he shifts over from left guard. Aaron Basavich moves in at left guard for the Crimson Storm. Cizik started the season at center. Davis remains in at quarterback. He fakes the give to Fellows, rolls left, looking, looking, looking. Now he's in trouble, and he's going to be planted by Carhew back at the 16-yard line. Davis had Robertson wide open coming across near the sideline, but couldn't pull the trigger. Brings up second down and goal from the 15-yard line, a loss of eight on first down. Could be wrong here. Gage Porter... Supposed to be his check down route. 
It's kind of going off script. It looked like took one step towards the flow of the play and then went back the other way. He's played up man, running back, quarterback. Davis takes a snap, gives it to Porter, running right, cuts it up inside at the five. He dives. He's in. Touchdown. And more fisticuffs happening as Carhughes slung Asa Robertson to the ground. As both teams were playing out the loose ball, not aware that it had already been signaled a touchdown. But that is the case. Officials separating both teams. So the ruling on the field, a touchdown for Gage Porter, his third on the ground this afternoon. And the Crimson Storm expand their lead with 43 seconds to go in the third quarter. Atwell's extra point is up and true. So our new scorer now in Bethany, 42 to seven. The Crimson Storm putting a beat down on the Bison on rivalry week. And Landry, the, the frustration for Oklahoma Baptist is certainly understandable. You know, you have such an improved defense this year. SNU, a team that, you know, in the two previous times here in Bethany, they've rolled all over. Last year, SNU rolled over them. You're looking for a bit of redemption, a bit of payback, if you will, and instead, Frankly, it almost looks
So the Bison with their second score of the afternoon. Villarreal on for the extra point. And he sends that one up and through. Flag comes in. I mean, too many men on the field. And that is the call. 12 players on the field for SNU there on the extra point. So that's the end of the third quarter. 42 to 14, the Crimson Storm up big on their rivals, Oklahoma Baptist. We'll take a break and come back with the final 15 minutes from Bethany after these messages. This is SNU Football. University Counseling Center. We are located at 6710 Northwest 43rd Street, just north of the Webster Commons. Renew offers a variety of services, including individual counseling, couples counseling, and psychoeducational workshops. The first five sessions for students are free, and students will never pay more than $10 per session. Faculty counseling is just $40 per session. Renew is open Monday through Thursday from 9 a.m. to 8 p.m., and Fridays from 11 a.m. until 6 p.m. For more information, visit renew.snu.edu or email renew at mail.snu.edu. Welcome back to Bethany. The start of the fourth quarter with SNU leading this one 42 to 14. And Landry, it's been a great day to be a Crimson Storm. Oh man, couldn't have, couldn't have planned it any better. Got the offense rolling specifically on the ground game. Defense playing really well. Getting seniors, have seniors making big plays on senior day. Maxwell, the kickoff, finds Bird one yard deep in the end zone. He's bringing it out. Bird racing to the near side, a host of Bison players all over him, and he's taken down inside the 20 yard line. Good coverage there by Kendall Williams. There's a flag all the way back at the goal line. Smith Nave lost his helmet, courtesy of Caden Boyd. Yeah, and I think Caden Boyd took a swing at the end of that play. He, if, if that's true, he might be done. So offsetting unsportsmanlike conduct penalties. Frankly, a little surprised we haven't gotten a few more of those yep. of the offsetting variety thus far. But that is the case, and it's SNU football first and 10 at their own 17-yard line. Moving left to right in this fourth quarter. Two wide receivers to the left, Arian Welch. In at running back for the Crimson Storm. He's to the left of Gage Porter. Porter gives it to Braxton Bird, running left. The speedster on the outside across the 20, upfield at the 25, and he's decked out of bounds by the Bison defender over there. That's Jackson Cannard, junior safety out of Oklahoma Christian School here in Edmond. Then the... 11-yard pickup to the 28-yard line and a first and 10 for SNU. Showing his speed around the edge. Looks dead to rights after about seven yards. Able to tiptoe for the first down. Ball on the left hash for SNU. Zach Cizik remains at center. Braden Glover. Out. Too wide either side. Here comes Bird in motion to the top. Porter fakes it to him. 
Picks his way up the middle. Made a man miss in the hole. 40, and he's outside. 50, 45, pushed out of bounds. Inside Bison territory by Chase White Bear, but not before he got down deep across midfield to the 41-yard line. Another big gain for Gage Porter. And a first down for SNU, 13.30 to go in the ball game. Such a patient runner. He's waiting for people to pick up blocks and then he's just cutting to the open field. And all of a sudden, he's got 20 yards of green grass in front of him. Green turf. Two wide either side with the ball on the left hash. The senior Angel Ramirez to the left of Gage Porter in his final game in Bethany Porter. Gives it to Bird around the left side, cuts through a hole down inside the 30 yard line before he's chased down by Braden Johnson from behind, but all the way down to the Bison 28 yard line, 13 more yards for Braxton Bird. Bird having a great game. Started getting more consistent touches about halfway through this season. Scored his first touchdown to lots of cheers. Two wide right, one left for SNU from the left hash. Porter gives it to Angel Ramirez, picking his way up the middle. Jake Landers for the Bison, ripping at the football. He can't get him to the ground, even though they've got six Bison defenders on him. They'll give him two down to the 26. Second down and eight as we tick down to 12 minutes to play, 42 to 14, Southern Nazarene with the lead. Gage Porter, 173 yards on the ground, inching ever closer. Don't know if he'll be able to get it. Won't be able to tie or break the record on this possession. He'll need one, at least one more to do it. Porter following Donald May around the right side. He's decked hard down to the 22-yard line. Johnson. Again on the tackle, Luke Morrow in there as well for OBU. Third down for the Crimson Storm. It'll be five yards to go from the Bison 23-yard line. Ball's not going to anyone else here. Gage Porter. Watch out for the quarterback draw. Third and five. Two wide receivers either side. Ramirez to the left of Porter. Porter fakes the give to Fellows, picking his way, finds a gap, dives forward, down to the 16-yard line. Offic lost the football, officials say he was down. It looks like Porter came up with it anyway. Lost his helmet in the process. So Jarvis Davis will have to come on for one play. And Porter walks off for the moment. Under 11 minutes to go. First and 10 SNU at the Bison 16 yard line. The ball on the right hash for the Crimson Storm. We're pushing close to the 500 yard mark for the second consecutive week. Davis takes a snap. Gives to Ramirez, right up the middle he goes. Taken down at the 11 by Cannard. Looked like Ramirez had a hold of daylight, but Cannard, a nice play coming over from the safety spot. Yeah, Ramirez sees the sees part there. And you could, you could almost sense it from up here, Luke, that he was thinking about a touchdown and at the last second gets chopped down. Porter back in on second and five. Under 10 minutes to play, 42 to 14, Southern Nazarene. Ball smack dab in the middle of the field, two wides to the right. Bird and Ramirez flanking Porter in the pistol set. Porter takes a snap, fakes it to Bird, follows his blockers, up the middle, cruising into the end zone. Another touchdown for Gage Porter as he hits the Heisman pose. <laughs> Heisman, uh, is he Heisman eligible in Division Two? He is Harlan Hill Trophy eligible, <laughs> uh, which is the Heisman Trophy for Division Two. Nearly was a finalist a year ago, missed it by just a couple votes. I doubt that'll be the case again this year. 
Extra point from Adam Atwell. Up and good. So with 9.39 to play in the ball game, the Crimson Storm up big, 49 to 14. It's a happy homecoming for the Crimson Storm faithful. We'll be back with more SNU football after these messages. It's a beautiful morning, Scotty, and we have an early game today. That injured list, it's getting longer by the minute. Not to mention, uh, there's apparently a nasty virus sweeping through the locker room. Yeah, but these players, they're in good hands. All of them need to feel their best this season, Scotty. Yes, they do, Jack, because this team is on track to win it all this year. Every day, Mercy's team is ready to take care of yours, bringing you the care you need now. Find out all the ways to access Mercy at mercynow.net. Forty-nine to fourteen, Southern Nazarene leads Oklahoma Baptist with nine thirty-nine to play. Luke McConnell, Landry Franks, with you. Let's run through the scores around the conference real quick. Southeastern has come all the way back. They lead twenty-one to fourteen over East Central with nine and a half minutes to play. Southern Arkansas leads Monticello forty-five to seventeen near the end of the third quarter. Harding forty-nine, Arkansas Tech zero. The Wonder Boys with just ninety-seven yards of offense right now. And halftime in Alva Northwestern leads Southwestern. 13 to nothing. And Pruian, another sky high kick. Kennard catches it up at the 32 yard line. Couple hits, couple shoves, and a flag. Flags are coming a little bit quicker now. Let's see who they're going to tag. They might. Landry, I feel like at this point in the game, with everything going on, the prudent meth operation would be offsetting every time something like this yeah. happens just to keep everybody with cooler heads. There's also a flag back here at the 35-yard line. It looked like an SNU player might have gotten a bit of a quick jump. And just to update on the Battle of the Ravine between Henderson State and Washtenaw, that game finished earlier with Henderson State getting the 31-27 win over Washita, and that should end the Tigers' playoff hopes. So both fouls on the Crimson Storm. The offsides and an unnecessary roughness penalty, so the 20 yards of flags will push the ball into SNU territory at the 48-yard line. And that's where the Bison will start first and 10, obviously their best field position of the afternoon. Three wide left, one right for the Bison. Buddy Bazell, the running back for Thomason. They swing it out to Meadow. Meadow. Strung out by Sproul and a nice job by Sproul, but Meadow did get a couple yards across the 40, up to the 45 yard line. Gain of two on first down, but a nice job there by Seth Sproul getting outside. Yeah, Sproul coming off the block there. Almost has him for a tackle for loss on the quick wide receiver screen. Makes him bounce outside. Trips right. Thomason goes that way. Navavi has it across the inside the 40-yard line, ushered out of bounds by Spruill and Mays and dumped at the 39-yard line of SNU. Brings up third down and two for the Bison. Thomason hustling his bunch to the line of scrimmage. 
Thomason gives to Bazell, trying to pick his way on the outside. He ran into Carter Brock, and that is always a bad idea for a ball carry as Brock dumps him for a loss of one back to the 40. It's fourth and three. You have the delayed blitz from Spruill, who flies in and forces the running back to step into the, the middle linebacker coming down the field. Fourth and three for the Bison. 8-14 to play. The Crimson Storm lead by 35, 49 to 14. Two wide either side. Thomason back to pass. Blitz comes off the edge. Thomason floats it to no one. Hits incomplete. The delayed blitz from Kenyatta Richardson forced the errant throw from Thomason and a turnover on downs as SNU forces the four and out. The four and out. You don't get to say that very often. This offense coming back onto the field wanting more. I think Coach Hayde is going to take his time each play here. The defense, Luke, can't say enough about how well they played specifically in the secondary today. Just nothing downfield for this Bison offense. Bison have 227 yards through the air, but it has been difficult. Just 50% completion percentage and two interceptions. Of course, one pick six. And it's Jarvis Davis in at quarterback as Gage Porter stays on the sideline. Someone might need to get on the headset and tell him <laughs> to get Gage 15 more yards. Davis. Turns and gives to Cepeda, right up the middle. Carlos Cepeda inside Bison territory, all the way down to the 32-yard line. This half they've been working this Bison defense on the outside run and haven't really seen an inside handoff to a running back in some time in Cepeda. Using those quick legs, scamper for about 40 yards. Senior Trey Leap out there right now at tight end. As the seniors begin to filter out onto the formation. Arian Welch takes the handoff. He bounces it outside. Inside the 20 goes Welch. And the Bison are helpless to stop the SNU ground attack. Trey Dedman also out there, wide receiver. He was recognized as part of Senior day earlier today. Trying to see who else is out there for the Crimson Storm. Aaron Finch in at right guard right now for the Crimson Storm, along with Robert Combs at left tackle. Davis takes a snap, fakes the give to Bird. Up the middle he goes, spin move in the hole, but Jake Landers was there. Gain of four. Down to the 14-yard line for Jarvis Davis. Brings up second down and six. Excuse me, second down and seven. The original line of scrimmage was a 17 there. This is a you know tough spot to be in for this OBU defense. They're been working hard all day. Got some fresh faces in there, but you have an SNU offense with a, a lot of fresh faces too, and they're eager to, to take part of some of the action. Certainly Jarvis Davis wants the score on his senior day. Two wide either side on second and seven. Weston Smith the back. Davis fakes the give to Donald May. And now he's picking his way into the middle of the Bison defense, decked by Luke Morrow in there, along with Braden Johnson down at the 11-yard line. Three more for Jarvis Davis. A couple more seniors make their way onto the field. Allen Hernandez and Cole Mills. In now for the Crimson Storm. Third and three from the Bison 11 yard line, 515 to play. Davis gives it to Weston Smith. He barrels his way across the 10. He's got the first down. It'll be first and goal. Should be first and goal. Haven't signaled yet. Nope, fourth down, okay. Looked like the spot where he landed was good. He's just short, less than a yard. And Landry, we have 4.50 to go in the ball game, and we have not seen a measurement all season long. <laughs> just wanted to point this that out. Probably not the time for one. Davis under center, takes a snap, 
gets the shove from Smith. Flag flies yeah. both sides. Let's see what the legal formation call is. certainly on the Crimson Storm. Had a wide receiver not even set. And that is indeed the call, illegal shift on the Crimson Storm. To the five yards will make it fourth and six now. Four and a half minutes to play. Ball at the Bison 13-yard line. Clock moves. 4.30 and counting. Well, it's been a fantastic homecoming senior day for SNU and the Crimson Storm faithful. Davis takes a snap, gives it to Smith. Cuts inside. He's not going to get there. Slung down hard by Braden Johnson at the 10-yard line, and that will be a turnover on downs. So the Bison defense gets just their third stop of the game. And it comes with 4-12 to play. And everything all over but the shouting. And based on how this game has gone, Landry, there might be some shouting yeah. in the handshake line. Yeah, it might be one of those handshake lines that uh, have coaches on either side trying to move it along as quickly as possible. Cover everybody who's out there right now. Jeremy Alcorn out there along with Sam Bass. Davian Houghton out there. Thomason slings it out. Looking for Nick Harris. Breaks a tackle at the 20. He's going to be wrestled down by Aaron Randall right at the 20-yard line. Enough for the first down for the Bison. Colton Morris out there right now for SNU. Cameron Flowers is recognized as well. Benito Rivas out there at linebacker as well for SNU. Three wide right, one left for the Bison. Thomason looking down the sideline. Tried to go to his big wide receiver, Donovan Dixon. That Josh Johnson with great coverage there. Johnson staying out there as a, as a senior, obviously. He's played tremendous today. He's played like a veteran and like the best cornerback on the field for either team today. Clarence Underwood now out there for SNU. Thomason has the snap back to pass. Scoots to his left, fires downfield. He's got Nick Harris in stride in SNU territory, and he runs out of bounds at about the 38-yard line. Nick Harris and Alex Nababi giving SNU problems today. Harris has both Bison touchdowns today, and the Bison's quickly to the line of scrimmage at the SNU 37-yard line. Here's Thomason, pump fake. Has a wide open man on the far sideline, and it falls incomplete. Pass came too far inside. If Aaron Randall might have turned around, he might have had a pick there. Yeah, I think but it might have <laughs> tapped him on the shoulder on the way down. But too That's busy uh, noticing how wide open Navavi was over on the far side. That's just a fake screen and go, so Navavi on those – Wide receiver, inside wide receiver screens is going to go to number two and block. And instead he chops his feet right before he blocks and then releases, and he is wide open. Yukini Kasimu out there at corner for SNU as well. Two wide either side, in tight. Thomason in trouble. Fires it to the outside. He's got Dixon. He's taken down at the 32-yard line. Bass and Rivas in on the tackle. Be third down and five from the 32-yard line. Another hold there by the Bison. And uh, referee's pretty uh, pretty convinced to not throw the flag on a hold. Guess it didn't really matter to the Crimson Storm in the long run today, but. I didn't realize Harding was playing today. <laughs> Three wide right, one left. Thomason rolls to the right. Under pressure, fires it back into the middle of the field. It's caught by Nababi inside the 20-yard line at the 18, a first down for the Bison. Nababi's been everywhere today. <laughs> a 
Ball on the right hash for Oklahoma Baptist. 2-12 to play. SNU leading 49-14. Three wide left, one right for the Bison. Thomason, go route, looking for Nabavi. He's shoved out of bounds by Kasimu. No flag flies. Lots of contact there. A little hand fighting by both cornerback and receiver. It'll be second and ten. Two minutes exactly. It's good, good ball by Thomason on that last throw to the end zone. Thomason back to pass. Fires it to the outside. Too wide of Dixon. Ball is incomplete. Again, we talked pregame rumors of a potential bowl game for the winner of this game. Heritage Bowl out in Corsicana. They'll make their decision later this weekend, perhaps Monday. Commissioner Will Pruitt telling us that he will have conversations with the bowl committee tomorrow. So we'll see one way or the other within the next couple days. Thomason has the snap, back to pass on third and 10, over the middle, he's got his man Meadow at the five yard line, taken down by Mays at the, Jalen Mays at the four. So first and goal for the Bison. Of course, talking to Coach Hayda, he's more concerned about the end of the season for when he can get in a deer stand somewhere. <laughs> I certainly think he Pass is caught for the touchdown by Dixon. SNU jumped off side. So I believe that that will not impact the result of the play as Donovan so. Dixon, the sophomore, catches the touchdown pass. Was there a whistle before? No. Nope. Most of the SNU defense didn't, didn't hardly move on that play. Back to Coach Hayda. I think he'd much rather play play one more game with some of these players than be in a deer stand just yet, but he just wants to He just wants to know. Clarity, you know. Clarity. Who, who, do who, who doesn't want that? Exactly. Via Ray Allen for the extra point, sends it up and through. And part of that is just the calendar, because as he told us, he won't be able to have any sort of mandatory anything, really, with his team besides just team meetings until January 17th after today. So obviously with a potential bowl game in the next three weeks, you know, you get more practice time, more time away, uh, or more time with your team, just going over things, building that culture. Uh, although as he pointed out to us, you got Thanksgiving in two weeks. Uh, so it's not like there's gonna be a ton of practices that they're going to be able to take advantage of anyway uh, between now and December 2nd. But every little bit helps, especially for some of these young guys, these redshirt guys in particular, who, you know, get time every week. You know, like he's mentioned, they go through every Thursday. The backups and the redshirt guys, they do a full scrimmage. You know, the veter starters and veterans, they're on the sides, they're hooping and hollering, making noise, playing the great teammate role, and you know, they coach them up and go through the film of it every single week. And you know, that's, that's a pretty unique thing in college football. Yeah, you, who wouldn't want a few extra practices with their young guys to develop them? He certainly mentioned that, but, but also just, you can see it on the field today, right? Everyone wants to compete. And Coach Hayde is not afraid of putting some younger some younger players in a position to compete. They do it, like you said, Luke, every week in practice. But they also have um, opportunities here in this game, at the end of this game. But potentially, you know, hopefully they get one more game and a few weeks of practice to get some of these younger classmen some extra playing time before the offseason. Hands team out there for SNU right now. Maxwell just boots it deep. And it's going to reach the end zone for the touchback. So 135 remaining in the ball game. 
Let's see if Gage Porter comes out for one last hurrah. He's At the moment, I don't see any quarterback in the huddle. Gage is moseying out there. Oh, it is Jarvis Davis out there. And we we knew that was going to happen. Yeah. You know, Dustin Hayes saying there's not going to be any curtain calls or stopping the game <laughs> for, you know, standing ovations or bows or anything. You know, Gage Porter just comes off the field after that last touchdown drive for SNU, and we don't see him on the field again. Yeah, and I think it might be a little different. He might be singing a different tune if he didn't, hadn't broken the record last year. He's only a few yards away this year. But this team's not about individual accolades, not about records. Gage Porter, certainly not. He's been a tremendous player here. But this program has has grown exponentially on the back of lots of players, not just Gage Porter, but the recruiting classes have been strong. Coaching every year has been excellent. People want to compete. People want to play, and results are showing on the field. Davis taking a couple knees here to run the clock out. And that's how the season is going to come to an end. Southern Nazarene, their first ever above 500 record in Division II. You know, you can poke fun that, hey, you know, that's not much to be excited about. But at the same time, that's how you celebrate. That's how you build a program. Yes. Incrementally, one step at a time with little accomplishments here, little accomplishments there. And the Crimson Storm get the big rivalry win over Oklahoma Baptist today. 49 to 21. They finish the season 6 and 5, the best record in the D2 era for the Crimson Storm. And we will Wait and see if a bowl game is in the cards for SNU. Find out maybe tomorrow, maybe Monday or Tuesday. We'll definitely stay tuned to all the SNU athletic social media channels for announcements of that nature. Everything looking pretty ship shape in the handshake line. You know, at the end of the day, these are you know two yeah. good teams. Played a hard-fought game today, and SNU was just the better team in both phases today, Landry. And um, it's nice for the home fans to get to see the win after back-to-back one-and-four home slates coming into today. SNU gets their second home win of the year to move to six and five. But really, uh, after that first punt, Landry, four straight touchdown drives in the first half for SNU, and that really set the tone for the rest of the day. Yeah, and just being able to consistently run the football. They they played the game they want to play, and we've seen in some of the closer games and some of the wins and some of the losses that teams have forced SNU to pass more than they want to or put Gage Porter in uncomfortable positions, but there wasn't a play today where Porter in this offense and even the defense, too, had immense amount of stress on them. It was... The great game, well played. I don't think Coach Hayda could have drawn up a a win like this in his mind if he was thinking this week. And when we talked to him, he he thought it'd be tight. We we thought it would be tight. We thought it'd be down to the wire. And SNU just the more dominant team in all phases of the game today. Gage Porter last out of the line over there with the Oklahoma Baptist players having a. Word with John Brooks, who part of the Bison Radio Network, former OU play-by-play -play announcer, and I'm sure every single defender in white over there for Oklahoma Baptist saying, thank goodness that I don't have to tackle you ever again. Uh, absolutely. I mean, imagine being a linebacker trying to tackle a quarterback who's bigger than you. Gage Porter, tremendous season. If this is the last time he puts on the pads, Credit to him, credit to all of the seniors who played um, this year and to the, to the team in general. This is big steps. I think in the future when we look back at SNU football, this will be a six and five will be a normal thing. 
I think uh, a lot of ways looking at this team, the team from last year, as those foundational pieces for the culture and the competitiveness that they have going forward. Let's run through the final numbers for you. SNU rolled up 511 yards today on 62 plays, 8.2 yards per play. 64 plays for 335 yards for Oklahoma Baptist, 5.2 yards per play. SNU 376 yards on the ground, 135 through the air. Gage Porter was eight for 11 throwing. He had 195 yards, four rushing touchdowns on 23 carries. Donald May, seven carries, 111 yards, two scores, three for 28 for Carlos Cepeda, two for 23 for Braxton Bird. The Bison, just 18 yards on 18 carries, and Landry, the SNU rushing defense has been certainly much maligned over the years, even, even just a year ago with how good SNU uh, how much SNU improved as a team. Still gave up 251 yards on the ground this last year. 178 yards on the ground coming into today. That 18 today, gonna really help that average out a lot. But <laughs> I think they'll be pleased with that average, but I think in general, we, you know, Luke, when we sat down with Coach Haight at the beginning of this year, one of the things he said that has been most improved was the defense and the interior defensive line. And that's been true all season. This. This is a defense that is no longer um, looked at by offenses like, oh, we're going to have a field day. But every aspect of the Crimson Swarm team improved this season uh, on top of a great season last year. And I think Coach Hayden and his coaching staff expect the same thing to happen next year. Individually for Oklahoma Baptist, Aiden Thompson, 14-28, 155 yards, a touchdown, and two interceptions. Jason Thomason. 10 of 18, 162 yards and two scores. Bison, 317 total yards through the air. Edric Lambert, just 15 yards on 11 carries. He was the leading rusher. Nick Harris, five catches, 115 yards, two touchdowns for the Bison. Alex Nabavi, seven catches, 92 yards for the Bison as well. Let's run through the final scores around the league real quick. Southeastern came back and finished off East Central 24-14. Southern Arkansas up now 60-17 against Arkansas Monticello uh, with about 10 minutes left in that one. 408 yards on the ground thus far for Southern Arkansas. Harding took care of business against Arkansas Tech today 56 to nothing. Would not surprise anyone to see them as the number one seed in Super Region 3 when the playoff brackets are announced, but we will see how that shakes out. Looking ahead down the road. It was 13-0 Northwestern at halftime. It's now 20-0 Northwestern early third quarter. And in the Battle of the Ravine in Arkadelphia, 31-27, Henderson State defeats Washita Baptist. So we'll see what the GAC playoff picture looks like. Obviously, Harding will be at home for at least the first two rounds, at minimum the number two seed potentially the number one seed. And we'll see how that all shakes out. Southern Arkansas needing chaos today. Haven't looked at scores from around the region at this point, but Southern Arkansas was on the edge of playoff contention, but needing some chaos to happen. One of that did happen with Henderson State beating Washita. We'll see if the Reddies are able to punch a ticket to the playoffs because of that win, but they were not even ranked in the top ten of the region in this week's regional ranking. So we'll see what that goes. But on the road at Washita, certainly as good of a win as anybody in that lower part of the bracket has at this point in the season. But another year in the books, Landry. Year five in the books for us. Another fun year. And now next year we, we look ahead to life with without the, the face of the program <laughs> as we've come to know it, as certainly as we've come to know it, as we've gotten – to have a front row seat for Gage's entire career here at SNU. And now it's going to be up to somebody else, whether that be Carson Hendricks or Rashid Noel or somebody else, maybe not yet on the roster. Mm -hmm. um, although based on how Coach Hayda describes the scheme, probably not going to be somebody not on the roster. Yeah. <laughs> but I think they like the guys that they have and and uh, always want to reload when they can. But, but I'm looking forward to, to seeing what this team will look like next season and how they'll improve. 
A lot of, a lot of guys recognized today, 19 seniors recognized today. Um, but from if you look at the numbers, not a lot of guys coming off the numbers list as far as who was putting up numbers for SNU this year. And, you know, that in no way discounts the contributions right. that those right. 19 have made to the Crimson Storm program. And, you know, Coach Ada was quick to mention that. Uh, you heard it in the pregame talk and just in our conversation off the record with him, just mentioning how much those guys have meant to him and mm -hmm. to the program um, and what they've done to lay the foundation for other guys to come in have – honestly elevated expectations now it's not uh, the expectations now as opposed to five years ago for us and you are completely different as a program because of what we've seen over the past couple of years yeah i think going forward winning record is is what is the bar minimum right that's that's the expectation going to bowl games should be a regular thing for this program and and that's going to take a lot of effort and continued growth but it's uh, uh, a place where they're well positioned to do that and uh, it's going to take some new faces, some unfamiliar faces. It'll be a good journey next year, Luke. And it's been a great season with you and with all our team here at uh, Southern Nazarene. So that'll do it. Our final broadcast of the 2023 season. Southern Nazarene beats Oklahoma Baptist 49-21, to the final score. Again, pay attention to SNU Athletic social media channels. Potential bowl game will be decided in the coming days. We'll find out if SNU is indeed heading to the Heritage Bowl or not. Again, just rumors at this point, but certainly something that we know the conference has been uh, advocating for the winner of this particular game to be selected. So we'll see how that all plays out um, going forward. And, of course, be sure to come out to West Harmon Field tomorrow afternoon, 2 o'clock, for the GAC MIAA Men's Soccer Tournament Final SNU, the top seed, taking on Rogers State. If you're not able to make it out, be sure to tune into the GAC Sports Network. Me and Landry will have the call for that tomorrow afternoon, 2 o'clock, for kickoff of that final. Again, it's been a great year. Thanks for tuning in with us. Thanks for um, just riding with us on this fun ride. The past two years have been great. We've been privileged to bring it to you here on the SNU Athletics YouTube channel. Producer Grant McNew, an awesome job this year expanding the broadcast capabilities. He's done a fantastic job all year long. Grateful for him and his hard work each and every week. Hopefully you, you can appreciate that at home watching on YouTube as well. So a great year in the books for the Crimson Storm, finishing 6-5. and five. And we look forward to next August when football We'll be back here in Bethany. For all of us at SNU Athletics and for my partner, Landry Franks, I'm Luke McConnell saying good evening from Bethany and bolts up, everyone. <laughs>